Football playoff, and they reload with a talent-rich roster. Joe Campbell Stadium, back to full capacity. And there's a feeling that a garnet and gold turnaround is underway. And we've got Notre Dame on Florida State right here on ABC. Oh, we needed this. This is good for us. Healthy for the heart, nourishing the soul. A full serving of college football. Welcome back, college football. Oh. Roger and Tim. Oh, he gone. Hit him with some sauce. Oh, he gone. Hit it, he throw. Big man touchdown. Yes. You're either elite or you're not. is living done right. The traditions bond, the stories inspire. It all lights a fire and fills us up inside with pride and joy. These games are precious. That's why you remember them for the rest of your life. Welcome home, College Football 2021. How good is that? As we welcome you to the Capital One Sunday night kickoff. And that sun's going to be setting just after we kick off here in Tallahassee. Something about that late afternoon glow, just catching those iconic helmets that feels right. Good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore alongside Greg McElroy on another night of what I think has been the best slate of opening weekend games the sport has had in recent history. And not just because of what was on the field. I mean, the action was sensational. Because of that thing that college football just overflows with. Passion. We saw it all day yesterday, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Filled stadiums, fans, bands, and pageantry. You say Notre Dame, Florida State, you get plenty of it. And with Notre Dame, you also have one other thing. Elite talent, especially at running back. Yeah, it's the backbone of their team. And they're deep at running back, too, with a one-two punch that will rival anybody in college football. But it starts with Kyron Williams. Last year's young player really burst onto the scene. Became a household name. Unbelievable acceleration. Really shifty, moving side to side. But it's the versatility that you love so much when you watch him play. He can contribute in the run game, obviously, but how he factors into the pass game is also something to keep an eye on throughout the course of this game. Him and backfield mate Chris Tyree might even be on this field at the same time with Tyree in a running back set and Kyron Williams out at slot receiver. Wouldn't shock me at all. Let's keep the conversation in the backfield because still, folks, the short list of positions in American sports that are attention-grabbing and pressure-packed starting quarterback at Notre Dame. They got a new one. But this starting quarterback at Notre Dame, he thought he was going to play another sport at Notre Dame. You go back to ninth grade, and Jack Cohn originally committed to play lacrosse for the Irish to coach Kevin Corgan as a ninth grader, not coach Brian Kelly. Life took him elsewhere, went to Wisconsin, went to a Rose Bowl. Now, eight years later, Katie George, he's transferred in to be the Irish quarterback. Well, Tess, Jack Cohn has an idea of the expectations that come with being the starting quarterback at Notre Dame. He's about to get the full experience here tonight. It's something he and Tommy Reese, a former Notre Dame quarterback himself, have discussed at length. Cohn says he welcomes the pressure. He told me he's the right man for this job because all he's focused on is his teammates, what they need, and what his coaches want, which is an accurate and consistent passer. And if that sounds like a game manager to you, that's fine by Cohn. He likens the label to someone who protects the football, puts his team in great situations, and throws a lot of completions. Guys, what's so wrong with that? I take personal offense to anyone that has ever called a game manager. Uh, you got the ring. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Silly phrase, but you got the ring. All right, let's talk about Florida State. Year two, Mike Norvell. Much different roster than what you knew it to be a year ago because of the transfers. And they, they went to the SEC, and we said, we need help with this defense, and they found it. Jermaine Johnson from Georgia. Hey, they took in 13 transfers, but these are the big three. Then they went to South Carolina. Care Thomas. They want a boost to that pass rush. Another South Carolina player. 
for Jamie Robinson in the defensive backfield. And the quarterback is going to be Jordan Travis. And Greg, he has made huge improvements since last year. And let's think of what he was thrust into last year. Young player, trying to learn a new offense. No spring ball. Abbreviated fall camp. Limited summer workouts. Hey, go out, young man. Do the best you can. He's grown an awful lot in the last 365 days. He's a more accurate passer. He's more cerebral before the snap. And he's more capable of carrying this team when they need to play from their quarterback. Hey, what do you say we do this? It's these two brand names with all the history. The signature helmets. They're under the bright lights tonight. Play like a champion today. The memories of legends and the feeling that new magical moments are about to be shaped. Folks, it's Notre Dame and it's Florida State on their standalone Sunday night stage. Another night of that pure college football passion right now. The Nissan pregame drive is next. After this message and a word from our ABC stations. Right about now, we could all use it. Welcome to the Nissan pregame drive. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And it right now. 75th year of football at Florida State. The first time they've ever played a game on a Sunday. Capacity. Crowd here. The COVID restrictions are gone in Tallahassee. So a full house as we get ready to kick off. And of course, that familiar sound that'll echo deep into the night. Well, the all time meeting between these schools. Fourth straight time that they have met up in prime time. Florida State, such a young team a year ago. And now confident that they have grown to a place ready to play to the level of their talent, ready to compete against this kind of an opponent. In all of Coach Kelly's Irish. And that undefeated run in the regular season a year ago, the trip to the college football playoff. As Mike Norvell's nose come out in front of the home fans. Drafted, but still so much elite talent to showcase. This has been the Nissan pregame drive. Kickoff from Tallahassee is next. Now a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Finally, another wide. My goodness. We had football last year. We found a way to play games. What we didn't have is this. The eruption for moments like that. Chief Osceola and Renegade. Been doing it that way down here for 43 years. 16 riders, six Appaloosa horses in that span. Notre Dame won the toss. They elect to receive. Chris Tyree will be back to field the Parker Grove House pick. Super Saturday to open the season. 
to do this right here. Knowles and Irish. And we welcome Jack Cohn to the Notre Dame Nation. What you need to know is that he was up in Wisconsin for three years, Greg. Took him to a Rose Bowl. Went for over 2,700 yards and 22 touchdowns in 2019. And now here he comes in as the transfer to the Irish, replacing Ian Book, who was Notre Dame's all-time winningest quarterback. Empty set to open things up. And he gets the completion to Michael Mayer. This is one of the most outstanding tight ends in the country. And he shows you why. Out to midfield. The sophomore with a 25-yard reception to start the season. Baby Gronk in style. A great run after catch there by Mayer. Offense number 52. Zach Carell, the left guard, with the penalty there. Well, you see Mayer off the right side, little pressure off the right side. Cone very alertly throws into the pressure, just like you're supposed to. Finds an easy completion, an excellent run after catch from the outstanding sophomore tight end. Last year, freshman All-America. Going to pass again, pressure, and he's going to be taken down, and it is the transfer from Georgia, Jermaine Johnson, had five sacks last season on one of the better defenses in the SEC. Just a great job on the right side, and you see Kyron Williams coming over, trying to save a life. He just couldn't do it, a little back, as Lovett forced Cone forward in the Seminoles' defensive line rally. So the penalty backed him up five. Two-yard loss there, second and 17. Cohn, with time, goes to the left side, and a good effort made by Braden Lindsay. Lindsay had a very strong spring camp, an even stronger fall camp, and he is primed for a big year. 15-yard reception. That was an excellent job on second and long, trying to make third down more manageable. Attack the soft push into the field. Third down and two. Cone quickly to the outside and wrapped up is Mayer right away. A keen den closed on Michael Mayer and kept him short of that line to gain. It's an excellent job on the right side by Akeem Dent closing, bringing down the big tight end in space. Fourth down and one. Cone to pass on fourth and one. Wide open, complete. Mayer striding into the end zone. What a start for the Irish. 41-yard touchdown, Michael Mayer. Well, you see that look, he knew it was going to be a matchup concern. First on to the scene a year ago. Now he delivers on the opening drive, the 6'4", 250-pound tight end. Jack Cohn comes here to the Irish and says, I found myself a target that I like a lot. 7-zip, Notre Dame. Oh, you're doing it? Racing premiere September 20th on ABC. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Well, a bust by Florida State leads to the first touchdown for the Irish on the year. You have pressure off the left-hand side. The problem is you have two routes on the right and only one guy to cover it. So as a result, next thing you know, when there's only one guy to cover two, it means one guy's going to be open. Jack Cohn did a great job of finding that open guy. 
Mayer scores the easiest touchdown of his career. Cone's opening series as the Irish starting quarterback. Four for four, 82 yards, a touchdown. Three receptions by Mayer. A run on the return. And he is met with good coverage short of the 20. Let's go down to the field to Katie. Well, guys, prior to Mike Norvell and his staff's arrival, Jordan Travis told me he was in a dark place. He lost all confidence in his ability. He questioned if he could even throw the ball five yards down the field. Offensive coordinator Killing Dunningham said when he met Travis, he saw a guy who was no longer having fun. He was just purely playing for a scholarship. So they went to work rebuilding his fundamentals while instilling confidence in him every single day. He always had the tools. He just needed to believe that they were still there. He says he's back to his old self and having fun playing football again. Uh, he is a totally different player from a confidence standpoint. You can't play quarterback scared. He is no longer scared, man. He is believing in himself. Six starts a year ago. Travis going to check down. And Corbin is upended right away. That was a good play by Cam Hart, the converted wide receiver. Now his second year playing defensive back for the Irish. Loss of five. It's going to be important for Travis just to stay in the moment, of course, First start of what feels like a new year. First time in an environment that's this chaotic. Stay in the moment. Play each play as if it has a life of itself. Second 15. Sprints left. Pressure comes after him, and he is able to get it complete. As surging ahead was Keyshawn Helton. He was questionable to play tonight. He's been dealing with a little inflammation in the Achilles area. Yeah, glad he's available. Him and Ontario Wilson, or Pookie Wilson, will be receiving most of the looks tonight from Travis. Two downfield. They're going to walk it back. Yard penalty to second down. Robert Scott, the left tackle, who was leaking past that three-yard gray area, an eligible man downfield as the play was extended. It was an RPO, and the left tackle, as he was blocking back to the second level, was more than those three yards. Probably because Travis had to hold the ball a little bit longer because of good coverage initially from Notre Dame. Makes for a second and 20. Travis looked one way, pressured in the end zone, and that is incomplete. He was running wild there. And as Isaiah Pryor was coming after Jordan Travis. Pryor, who started his career at Ohio State before he came over to Notre Dame. He's yeah. pursuing his second master's degree already. And this is an extremely well-coached Notre Dame defense. New defensive coordinator Marcus Freeman from Cincinnati. We'll be talking about him a lot. He's a star in the profession. He has been so well received by his new team, and he'll have these guys ready to go throughout the course of this game. One man rush on Travis, trying to set up the screen, and it is overthrown. As that was an ugly opening series for the Knowles. And just self-inflicted mistakes as you see Marcus Freeman, very emotional coach on the sideline. And he did a great job the last few years with Cincinnati. It's an amazing recruiter. Just an unbelievably great guy to be around. So much energy though on game day. And does a great job in the week leading up to make sure his team's prepared for every possible wrinkle that they might see throughout the game from the opposing offense. Aaron Williams is the punt returner as Mastromano is halfway into his end zone to punt for Florida State. High snap, able to field it. And a fair catch called at the 46-yard line. Fans, don't forget to check out the Great Clips Command Center broadcast of this game on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. How hard were we working at ESPN app? <laughs> I mean, we had every screen in the hotel room going, didn't we? we had oh, a big screen goodness. going. We had all the iPads going every which way. And what was just an amazing day of college football. It was so impressive with that. Well, listen, what the Georgia and Clemson defenses were able to do, but that Georgia front getting after DJ. And what a statement win that was. As the highlight moment of week one. Aaron Williams trying to bounce it to the right side as puts on a stiff arm, keeps his balance, 
And this is Kyron Williams, who a year ago, Florida State saw all too much of it. He had 185 yards and a couple of touchdowns on just 19 carries against the Knolls last year. Six yards there. He's so good and physical. Not big. Not big. When you see him in person, it's almost like, really? Gosh, he plays so much bigger than that. As you can see, just how strong he is. How about this stiff arm? What? My goodness. I mean, that is a punch with that left arm. Brandon Gant. Puck back or puck safety we got the best of. Second and four, flea flicker back to Cone. Winds it up, downfield, and that could have been intercepted. That was a keen dent who made a play on the balls. It was underthrown. He had coverage on Kevin Austin. Great job by Dent. Undercutting the route on the underthrow. Almost brought it in. Would have been a huge play for Notre Dame. And for the Florida State defense. Sets up third and four. Possible four down territory as well. They went for it just to drive a go and it resulted in a touchdown. Cone's first incompletion. Third and four. Incomplete. Mayer was the intended target. That was a great job by the Florida State defense right there. Coverage was better. The tackle there on the first down play was not great, but for the most part, that was a good answer after what was a disappointing opening drive for the Seminoles. Jay Bramlett, Don's upon away. Travis Jay is back deep for the Knowles. Fair catch right around the 20-yard line. Irish are up 7-zip. Ryan Kelly, year 12. Three wins away from tying the record. Newt Rockney is the all-time winningest coach in Notre Dame history. Finally, the perfect ratio. Capital One Sunday night kickoff on ABC is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Well, there has been a great job of honoring Coach Bowden. His memory he passed away August 8th at age 91. 34 years here at Florida State. Now, both of us had the pleasure of getting to know him through the years of being in the sport. What an absolute, absolute gentleman to the core Coach Bowden was. He's an amazing person, and of course, his legacy will live on forever, and the impact he made on so many people. Second offensive series for Florida State. Ward is wrapped up, didn't go anywhere. That was Drew White. You know, Coach Bowden, one of the great, when you're watching the memorial, everybody took in the memorial, and they put up so many of his great quotes. Now, the guy was funny, but he was also very poignant and very thoughtful at times, and he, he impacted so many lives. But the one quote I took away is Coach Bowden would always say, don't go to the grave with a life unused. And he used his to the fullest, didn't he? He most definitely did. Second and 11. I'm going to give it again to Ward. Ward works his way to the 20-yard line. Be third down from there with the early starting field position for Florida State. Right? Two drives here they've had of their own 17. First drive is a three and out and a loss of five yards. And here facing a third down and six. Got to be so much more efficient on first down because a young quarterback here in this spot Tough spot against a great defense like Notre Dame's. Third down and six for Jordan Travis in this Knowles offense. Back up and can't survive it as they swarm in and take him down. And it was J.D. Bertrand who cleaned it up after Adamilova, Jason Adamilova, first got the pressure. Marcus Freeman, year one as a defensive coordinator, he is showing his attacking style. And you're going to see this just a little twist up front 
has the in internal part of the offensive line starting to break down. And it forces Travis to roll out to his left where there is an awaiting Irish defender. That was a nice design up front and forcing Travis right into the awaiting defender that was perfectly done there and executed by the Irish defensive line. Flag before this punt. Off start. Offense number five. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. ACC crew with Jeff Flanagan as the referee. And Alex Mastromano, the punter, the big strong leg Australian, is saying to himself, can I please stop punting from my own end zone? Two for two and being on the garnet and gold. And as the star running back playing special teams, Kyron Williams will have a chance for prime field position. And drives this one all the way back to the 40-yard line. And Williams with a return of just four yards, 53-yard punt. Katie? Well, prior to tonight's game, guys, I had a chance to go to the unveiling of a commissioned Bobby Bowden painting by painter and friend Steve Skipper. Skipper told me that Bobby Bowden did get to see the painting before he passed away. His favorite part was that Skipper included his wife, Anne, someone who made everything possible. And I had a quick chance to speak with Anne. She said she questioned if she should come tonight, but all of the tributes were so well-deserved. Every time someone looks her in the eye, it takes everything in her power not to cry. She waved her hand in her face with me, and she said, I'm not going to do it in front of you. I'm not going to do it here tonight. And Katie, you know, 72 years Incredible. of marriage. Right? 72 years, Bobby and Ann. Chris Tyree, he's probably going to see a little more action with two back looks this year with Notre Dame, trying to find ways to get him on the field more and more as Tommy Reese, the young offensive coordinator. Last year, they did a great job by utilizing some of that two back, but they didn't use it very often because they went so much to their multiple tight end sets. They're still going to live in their multiple tight end, but that two back alignment is going to be something they'll use throughout the course of the year. Tyree had 103 yards against these Knowles last year. Out of the backfield, here he is. Able to get to the corner. He's got elite speed and then puts down the shoulder for a little something extra. And that'll move the chains for Notre Dame. And you see just getting him to the field with a ton of room and grass. Florida State can run now. They got some guys that can flat out run in the second level and the third level of this defense. But it just goes to show you just how fast Tyree is in the open field as he turned the corner and picked up some key yardage. If I'm Notre Dame right here, I'm taking a shot downfield. I'm going heavy, hard play action. I'm going to try to throw one over Florida State's head here on the plus 45-yard line. And they go here with Tyree, and he is gobbled up by Johnson. Johnson had the sack on that first possession, and he's trying to make a statement here coming over from Georgia. And he's not blocked here, but usually because of the speed of the jet sweeping wide receiver, he's usually able to jump leverage. But because of the length that Jermaine Johnson has, he was able to make the play. It's an excellent job by the transfer from Georgia. Now they're going to need for him to have a big year. That is where they lacked a lot of production is that defensive line a year ago. Cone on second and 14. And Mayer gets the reception at the 43-yard line for seven yards. As Green made the tackle. I feel like a broken record here. It's third and seven, obviously. But you're kind of in no man's land, probably looking at four-down territory yet again, especially with how your defense has played these first couple series. Right here, you can run the ball, Tess, on third and seven, pick up four or five. And you're looking at a fourth and two, you're probably going to go for it anyways. You have your whole playbook available to you. Mayer moves over to the left side of that formation. Third and seven. And he looks that way, but it's incomplete. Mayer couldn't hold on to it. And it's fourth down. And that's one that Mayer will lose a little sleep over because he had it right in his paws. The ball was well thrown, just a touch low around the belt, but for the most part, man, you're one of the best tight ends in America. It's one you have to have. Probably one of the two or three drops he'll have the whole season right there on a critical third down. Already been targeted six times by Jack Cohn here in this first quarter. <laughs> Nose down punt for Bramblett. Trying to get the pin here inside the 10. Fair catch is just around the 10 by Travis Jay. 
I'll tell you, the Noles offense has to find a little something. Minus nine total yards for Florida State as the sun has set at Dope Campbell Stadium on a Sunday night. Don't go anywhere. Thursday, September 30th on ABC. Glad you're with us watching the ACC on ESPN. Boy, Notre Dame three drives into Florida State territory. Florida State, they haven't gotten past their own 20, Greg. Yeah, look at the total yards already, and it's all about first down. They have to be more efficient on first down. They're going backwards, Joe. Snap was off to the right. Jordan Travis being chased and tries to dump it to the near side to McLean, the freshman receiver. That's incomplete. Yet again, you're in a situation where you're not in rhythm. You're not in regular down distance. You're now behind the sticks. You have a young quarterback. Right now your offensive line is having a really difficult time keeping those guys with gold helmets out of your quarterback's lap. Got to be able to run the ball, and it's looking like they're going to run the football. It's probably going to have to be outside the tackles. Formation to the near side, and they do run it, and Corbin is able to find something. And there he goes! Jay Sean Corbin! Just what the Knolls needed! A few years ago, this young man was at Texas A&M, suffered a really bad injury. Coaches around here were saying, you know, I know he came back and played last year, but to mentally get over that injury, it took this year, coming into this camp. And they said, you can tell he's back. You can see the game-breaking ability. And you just saw it there as Fitzgerald puts through the extra point. Bobby would love that sign. Coach Bowden would love this kind of game changer. Well, what a thing of beauty. The two polars off the left side, down blocking across the board on the right side. Look at them kick it out. And look at the seam that it creates. And there's nothing at that point between Corbin and this third level defender makes that guy miss. And he is out the gate. What a huge play for the Seminole offense that had done nothing right up to that point of the game. What were we just saying about this offense being in reverse? Boy, he hit the accelerator, didn't he? You go from a three and out, backwards, negative 10 yards, a three and out, backwards, negative nine, to 89 magnificent yards. Place sounds a little different when it's filled to the rim and you have plays like that. First time these two tradition rich programs have ever met up in a season opener. Notre Dame now back to the student section. As the volume has cranked up here at the dunk. Back to business with Williams. And see what happens when he gets something real positive on one side and it galvanizes and energizes the other side. As Amari Gaynor coming up in pursuit. 
He actually had a strong game against the Irish a year ago. Had 11 tackles and had a forced fumble in that game. So far, Notre Dame's offensive line has been losing the battle at the line of scrimmage. That's not something we're used to. This Notre Dame offensive line has been star-studded for a very long time, but this new-look Florida State defensive line is actually getting a really good surge up front. Second and ten, Williams, good seal on the outside, and then will shake and bake for Williams. It'll be third and short, finally run down by Jarvis Brownlee Jr., seven yards for Kyron Williams. Flag came in late there on the far side. After the play was out of bounds and on the ground, personal foul, laid hit number five in the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. That is on Brendan Gant. You're going to see him kind of fly over the top. Oh, man. It's close. I don't love it. I mean, I understand you got to protect the player. He's clearly out of bounds. Just didn't feel like there was any malicious intent there. But a little late. Understandable why they threw the flag. That sets it up as a first down at the 47 yard line. Tyree going to test that left side as well. Just a couple of yards. So you said a flag is down again. Brownlee comes in again and make the tackle. Holding offense on the 54 10 yard penalty. Still first down. I want to go back to the penalty. Greg, you said you didn't like it on Gant. We got our rules expert, John Perry. John, what do you say about this? Yeah, I'm with him. Look, the, the defender leaves his feet while the runner is inbounds, and there is not helmet contact to the body. I think it grazes over the top. That is John Perry, three-time Super Bowl official, long-time official in the Big Ten. His father ran the officials of the Big Ten for many years. First and 20 after we clean up all the penalty flags. Tyree showing that speed as he makes his way towards midfield. Travis J finally gets to him. 12 yards there. And I like the call there by offensive coordinator Tommy Reese. Backed up. Had a big mistake on the hold. First and 20. What are you thinking at that point? Draws and screens, man. Hand out that draw. And Tyree, the speedster, bursts to the second level for a really nice game. Tyree stays in with Jack Cohn. As Avery Davis motions over, Tyree's getting extended work, and with good reason, you see his wiggle. It'll be third and two from there. Another tackle by Jarvis Brownlee Jr. I wonder if the Notre Dame offensive line heard my challenge a second ago. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I mean, four straight plays, the offensive line has gotten much better push at the point of attack. Here they are now. Yet again, rinse and repeat, potential four-down territory in this part of the field. Byron Williams comes in on third and two. Big Michael Mayer now on the right side of the formation. Third and two. Williams trying to pick up that first down, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. Johnson got in there. Thomas got in there. The two transfers from the SEC helping out this Florida State defensive line. It was a great job by Johnson at the point of attack. Notre Dame leaving the offense on the field. See, if I were Notre Dame, I'd run away from number 11. Because so far, Jermaine Johnson has been a huge impact player at the line of scrimmage and getting, making plays in the backfield. Whatever side he's on, I'm going the other direction. Fourth and one from the Florida State 44. Play action, Cone. Pressure, diving catch. Where are they going to spot it? It depends on the mark as Williams was bobbling it. And that yellow line, remember, is unofficial. Amari Gaynor was coming in defensively. But it was thrown in a way where Williams couldn't field it cleanly and get upfield. So the officials are going to take a timeout. Did he secure the catch? It appears that he did. But in making that effort to have to juggle the ball and dive to catch it, he couldn't get his body upfield close enough to that line to gain so the chains come out. Yeah, 
I don't know. Based on where he went down, looked like he was just a little bit short, but it's really tough to tell exactly where the ball was because he lands right on top of it. He said, bring it closer, my friend. This may be a pimple of leather we got to decide with. Pass for the state on a turnover of downs. This game has changed. Defense is fired up after that 89 yard run by Corbin. They came out attacking. By the way, that 89 yard, fifth longest touchdown run in Florida State history. And thus the dueling sevens we've got on the scoreboard. Best starting field position for Florida State. They take over after the defense did their job at the 44-yard line. Travis scrambles out of it, trying to get to the edge, and finally chased down by Bosky. Only able to get a yard. Ran a long time for one yard. And he's just not right now getting the protection in the middle of that offensive line that he really needs. I don't know if he can see his receivers downfield because of how he's escaping the pocket and tucking the ball really early. Second and nine. To a feely, he can't get anything going at all. As Jason Adami Lola with the tackle. Senior from New Jersey. Coach Freeman is huge on his upside this year. Went to St. Peter's Prep back home. He's had a good career for the Irish. Travis, six starts a year ago, gets this assignment, had a good camp, earned the job over Mackenzie Milton. Now a third and eight, four-man rush. Travis finds some room and gets it complete for a first down to Keyshawn Helton. It's a really nice job by Jordan Travis. Keeping his eyes downfield, staying in a passing posture even as he was on the move, and finding the veteran Helton over the middle of the defense for the conversion. Final seconds here of a wild first quarter. And a sack by the Irish. Look at that front as Isaiah Foskey takes down Travis. The Irish came out. And they went to their star tight end to get the game going. The 41-yard touchdown to Michael Mayer. The Knowles offense looked like they were asleep, but then all of a sudden, Jay Sean Corbin went for 89 yards. Seven to seven game. The Capital One Sunday night kickoff returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. If you have a typical airline credit card, you're not. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Katie George with you. 7-7 between the Irish and the Knowles. Start of the second quarter. Second and 14. Jordan Travis. Travis stumbling. Ball comes out there. They're saying that's a live ball. Notre Dame's Foskey scoops it and returns it. We will look at the knee and see if the knee was down and then the ball came out because that's what it appeared to be. But Isaiah Foskey did the smart thing and said, let me take that. Yeah, I think that right knee was down. Let's see. Of course, still has control of the ball. Ball yep. right there, knee down. But I like that the officials let him play. Don't blow it dead. No doubt. Let him play. We'll clean it up after the fact. That's a good job by this officiating crew. Jeff Flanagan 
the ACC referee. He's got Ralph Pickett as replay. John Perry, this up here is very clean cut, does it not? It is clean cut, but hey, the reason why it's not blown dead is mechanically, when they go up the middle, to see those knees with seven, eight bodies in there, they're not going to see it. So you're exactly right. Let this play end and then come back and fix it. Yeah, I love that too because, I mean, if for whatever reason the ball was moving prior to his knee going down, it's a fumble, they blow it dead, then you get the ball right there, which is still good for Notre Dame because they obviously recovered it. But obviously a ball on the 40 is a little different than a touchdown. So I like that they let him play, John. I think that was good execution. They're, that's pretty well done for week one. I expect that to happen on week five or six, right? Week one, I like what we're doing. <laughs> Hey, they were just as ready as everybody else with all the emotion, all the fans. What a great game. They're ready to go tonight. You can bet. Oh, there's no doubt. I saw one of the line judges before the game, and he's like giddy with energy. He goes, how great is this to have everybody back in the stadium? <laughs> yeah, I told him, man, this is the best. The best. Well, we can't hear him, but you understand you get the idea that it's third down. Hey, give credit to Riley Mills, the defensive lineman for Notre Dame. I'm very impressed by some of these new emerging guys on this defensive line. And Mills is a guy that, you know, some of these open practices and scrimmages that the insiders saw, they're raving about Riley Mills. And that's who was getting after Jordan Travis there. They have been so impressive already. Riley's done a great job. Kurt Heinisch has been pushing the pocket there, the veteran. And then, of course, Howard Cross, who's not the biggest guy in the world, only 270 and about six foot, but he moves a little like Aaron Donald. That's a really good group of defensive tackles for the Irish. So it's a third and 19. Knee was down and Travis. Third and 19, sprint right, trying to set up now, move that pocket, and he goes underneath to Helton. So that gets him across midfield to the 43 with a fourth down after the 11-yard catch there. That was one of the few throws that we've seen in the first 15 or 16 minutes of this ball game, where Travis was in rhythm. He moved, set up, hitched once, and threw it beautifully. All other throws, for the most part, have been out of rhythm. They've been late. That's a testament to what Notre Dame's doing defensively and the fact that I don't know if Travis is real comfortable right now standing in the pocket and delivering the football. Mastromano on to punt again. Williams puts his heels on the eight-yard line. Go to Katie. Thanks, Tess. I'm on the sidelines with ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips. Jim, this is your first football season as the new commissioner. My understanding is this is game five of six this weekend. What's it been like taking in all these different atmospheres? It's been tremendous, Katie. It's great to have college football back. There's something therapeutic about what you see here tonight. And started in Raleigh on Thursday, Blacksburg Friday, Atlanta and Charlotte yesterday. We need college football, so it's been tremendous to get our ACC teams together, and we're off and running. Now the conference took a couple of hits this weekend, but what has been your impression of the overall strength of the ACC? I think there's way more positives than a couple losses. We played some tough teams. I love our coaches. We got hard-nosed kids that are going to get better as the year goes on, so the future is really bright. I, as you know, 12-game season is one, one week, and I'm really bullish on where we're headed. Thank you for the time. Enjoy this one. It's pretty good. Thanks. Go ACC. Commissioner Phillips, obviously Clemson, North Carolina, Miami, all taking losses this weekend. Kyron Williams went ahead for four yards. He has second and six. Greg, I want to ask you about where things are now in the ACC. This would be a big one if the Knowles could ever pull a major upset here tonight. Williams goes straight into the pile, then has to bounce it. And look at that hustle, pursuit, desire by Brownlee and the rest of the Knowles defense. Well, let's get to the conversation because Katie did a good job of asking the commissioner, where does this leave things with Clemson and North Carolina and Miami taking those losses this week? Well, I think it's a really bad start for the ACC as a whole. That's why this game is so enormous for the perception of the league. If Florida State can go out and get a top 10 win in week number one, everyone will be saying Florida State's back and the ACC is strong. So this is a massive game after what was a lot of really disappointing performances in big games by ACC teams the last couple days. Third and five for Notre Dame. Bobbles the snap. Ball is loose. And finally, Cone falls on it. 
It was their worst starting field position and an ugly looking series for the Irish as the punt team will head out and they're going to need to flip the field with a big boot. And Jack Cohn's eyes just looked right to his left as the snap was coming to him. For whatever reason, look at him glance left, his eyes go back square, and all of a sudden the ball's on him. I don't know if he thought that there might be pressure or presence. He wanted to get one quick look, but unfortunately that ball was already heading his way. Never take your eye off the ball right there. Obviously a bad play for the Irish offense. Jay Bramlett had 10 punts over 50 yards last year. He could use a big sky driver right here. Instead, it checks up at the 46, and they down it at the 45. So Florida State is going to have very good field position when we come back to now a loud Dope Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. You know the stories. Kimmel returns all new Tuesday on ABC. Tomorrow night, Greg, and I'm listening to Reese and Kirk and Molly. It is Louisville. It is Ole Miss. Chick-fil-A kickoff, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Matt Corral, great quarterback for Ole Miss. High rhythm, offense. We'll be going after each other tomorrow night on ESPN. I can promise you it's not going to look anything like Georgia Clemson. It's going to no. be a track meet. <laughs> That's so funny you said it. Travis on first down. He goes underneath to McLean. Great looking freshman and a big strider at six foot four. And here come the Knowles. As he goes for 20 yards there. Now, because of that successful first down play, they can get into some of their tempo stuff. And that's what they do. Pressure comes off the edge. Travis escapes it. And then he spins his way for a gain of two. You, know, you mentioned that about, hey, we're going to see a lot of offense tomorrow. I was actually talking to Herb Street just before kickoff. He said, you know, I think one of the big themes this year is I'm seeing better defense. Yes. Better defense because of the cohesiveness. Guys can bond, be together, none of the COVID restrictions. I saw it last night in that super game. Well, you had fall camp, a real yeah, fall right. camp. And, so. and that matters in defense, <laughs> right? Being together, that brotherhood. Second and eight, toe up inside the 10, grinds his way inside the 5. There is a desire and want to and fire in these knolls right now. 19 yards there. Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, said if Norvell finds something that will hit you, he will run it over and over and over again. Well, this is the exact same play they scored the touchdown on. The guard and the tackle both pull. The left side of the offensive line collapses. The next thing you know, there's a seam. And Toa Feely finds it. The Seminoles are knocking on the door. First and goal. They go I formation with Wyatt Rector as the fullback. Corbin as the tailback. Play action. Travis bootleg getting to the corner. Isaiah Pryor found out how quick Jordan Travis is. And Florida State has the lead on number nine Notre Dame. It's Gerald Capson. The kid can fly. Set the single season rushing yards by a quarterback record here last year. Now he's bigger, stronger, and feels better. And so do Florida State fans. They're up on the Irish. There's been Angie and done. Capital One's Sunday night kickoff on ABC is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Some of the best to ever do it. And now Brian Kelly is just three wins away from tying Newt Rockney. The most wins all time by a Notre Dame coach. But he's in for a fight here tonight for number 103. Florida State looks much different. 14-7 Knowles. 
Scored their 14 points in a minute 58. Went that true bootleg against that over penetrating defense moments ago, and that's why the Knowles have a seven point advantage. Katie. Test Greg, after Notre Dame's last offensive series, Brian Kelly beelined over to Jack Cohn on the sidelines. Now, he didn't yell, but let's just say his point was well received. When Kelly walked away, Cohn immediately turned to his receiving core with a straight face and said, Boys, we're good. I've got this next drive. I've got you out here. And this is why they like this kid, the maturity and the steadiness that he brings to the field. He never gets too high, and he never gets too low, guys. Katie, it reminds me of a conversation we had with Coach Keller the other day. Greg, remember when he said he has a calming presence when he was talking about his graduate student quarterback? He says real calm presence to him. It's what you need in a road environment like this, in a spot like this now. Absolutely. The momentum has gone from all the way on your side to the other side rather quickly. Williams, look at how patient he is, and then hits the accelerator before the pursuit finally gets to him as DJ Lundy tracked him down. Six yards for Kyron Williams. So that opening drive, 75 yards, the 41-yard touchdown to Michael Mayer, and then four drives of 50 yards and no points. But prior to that last play, Kyron Williams, their best offensive weapon, is still averaging under four yards a carry. They got to get him going, whether it's in the run game or get him involved in the passing game as well. Second and four. Williams. And the third and a long one, about two. I would give it to Williams again right now. Just pound it, pound it, pound it. Lean on that offensive line. 0 for 5 on third downs, but they get one here as Kevin Austin gets the catch, but then it's driven back hard. And it was Sidney Williams coming up to meet him. Eight yards there and a first down for the Irish. And that was a good read by Jack Cohn, too. Two Florida State defenders went with Michael Mayer to the flat. He's got the stick route sitting right there for a first down. And to pass on first down. As Williams shakes free, and Williams goes ahead, and he's to the Florida State 43-yard line. As boy, you get him the ball in open space, and good things happen. 15 quick yards, and he goes out, and in comes one of the fastest guys on the roster, and Chris Tyree, <laughs> guy who had a 94-yard touchdown a year ago against Syracuse. And he can be blazing. That snap again, but Cohn makes the most of it as he was smart to pick it up and be able to find that seam. McClendon was able to get to him. Well, that was really nice there by Cohn. I don't know if there was a miscommunication between him and the center. It looked like, based on how the ball fell, it looked like the center thought he was under center. So Cohn smartly grabs it, understands there's no way of saving this play. Let's just not make it worse. Go get what I can get. Make it second man. That center, by the way, is Jarrett Patterson, who is projected as a lock of a first-round draft pick. Second and six. Tyree to the outside. Tripped up, but his momentum takes him forward towards that line to gain. Good body control by Chris Tyree. That was really nice there by Tyree. You see that speed in the open field. It's actually a really nice tackle by Akeem Dent. Now, right here, if I'm Tommy Reese, the offensive coordinator for the Irish, I'm thinking play action. You have a fresh set of downs just outside the red zone. Play action. I'm going to try to hit Mayer down the field in a one-on-one -on -one situation against one of these safeties for Florida State. Well, Mayer just split outside towards the numbers on the bottom of your screen. First down. Cone. Pressured, and Johnson gets him again. That is Jermaine Johnson's second sack of this first half. And he really just beat two offensive linemen. On the left side of the offensive line, he's working against both the left guard, Zach, Zeke Carell, and the true freshman, Blake Fisher. He's able to find a seam, beat Carell inside. Johnson's been outstanding here in the first 25 minutes of this football game. 
Second 12 delayed handoff Tyree. He is met. He is brought down by Stephen Dix Jr. and Kalen Deloach. So if you're the quarterback here, your main thought process is I can't take a sack. If I take a sack, we're right on the fringe of field goal range. If I take a sack, we eliminate and potentially take points off the board. So you got to be really smart about the shot clock in your head and how quickly you got to deliver the football here on third and ten. Ninth play of this drive, a third and ten. And a lot of finger pointing on the left side of the line at Zeke Carell and the freshman Blake Fisher. Defense. Down. against the Knowles. So a third and five now as they place the ball at the 28. More manageable. Keep an eye here on Kyron Williams. He's lined up in the slot. One of the best slot receivers on the team. See if they can get a matchup for him. Instead, it's a quarterback run. And it goes absolutely nowhere. Brendan Gant was all over Jack Cohn. That was the call on third and five. Wow. A tackle for loss. And if you're going to run quarterback power, put in the more mobile option. Tyler Buckner, the third string quarterback. I, I mean, I don't understand why you would run quarterback power there with a guy that's certainly not known for his mobility. Instead, it'll be a 48 yard attempt from Jonathan Dorr, the snap from Vincent to hold the Brambler. <laughs> 48 yarder and a good target line kick. So Notre Dame gets something for their efforts of a 10-play drive. They close the gap to four. 502 until the half. With the capital Nice. New Monday and Tuesday on ABC. Well, this season, Allstate celebrates every field goal and extra point made participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship funds. Thank you, Allstate. Man, I hope they had the All-State Nets at the Presbyterian game yesterday. Did you see the quarterback, Ren Hefley? I saw that he had a career in one game. He had 10 touchdowns <laughs> for Presbyterian <laughs> against St. Andrews. That's the FCS record. There's Jay on the return. Travis Jay trying to work his way and makes it to the 20-yard line. ACC Network comes Saturday. You got the Illini against the Hoos to get the day started. Rutgers, Syracuse, Clemson back in action at 5 o'clock. And Florida State will be at 8 o'clock, finishing up the day on the ACC Network against Jacksonville State. It's interesting to watch Clemson from this point forward. Obviously, need some help. Some teams in front of them need some losses to get back in the playoff picture, but that's still a really talented roster, but they have not dealt with disappointment like this in the regular season in quite some time. What's going to be the signature win is the question that I would have. You look at that schedule ahead. I need teams on their schedule to really show their stuff and to rise up. What's going to be the signature win for Clemson to make an argument? Well, start. Offense number 80. Five-yard penalty. First down. He's on Pokey Wilson, who they are expecting to be a big part of the game plan and quick game tonight. Got a little head start right there. <laughs> he was trying to get him to a little tunnel screen. Pokey got a little fired up. Going a little early. Five penalties on Florida State already. start offense number 75 five yard penalty first down heading in the wrong direction yeah, and still in gibbons who actually played at notre dame for four years 29 games he played for the irish before transferring as a grad student down here to tallahassee 
And you saw a little interaction between him and the defensive tackle. I saw some chirping going on right there. Incredible story about him that we'll get to a little later on. First and 20. Three-man pressure as they run it with Corbin. And Corbin shakes loose to the 17-yard line. Had the 89-yarder earlier tonight. And they've had some big play opportunities, of course, Florida State has. But, man, they have made so many mistakes on first down. Lost yardage plays, penalties, shooting themselves in the foot. You can't do that against a great defense like Notre Dame. Drew White is showing pressure. Travis gets away from it, makes a cut, and gets himself to the 22-yard line. That's six yards. It'll be third and eight for FSU. On the offensive coordinator, Kenny Dillingham, right here. So far, Travis has done a decent job throwing the ball, but most of his better plays have been while he's been on the move. I'd try to find some type of quarterback draw or something based on the type of formation I'm going to get from the defense. Third and eight. They drop seven. Walks it downfield, and that ball is intercepted. That is the All-American Kyle Hamilton, his sixth career interception. And a flag is down. We will check on that. That is back at the 20-yard line. And as we'll see, we're downfield number 75. The penalty will be declined. Result of the plays and interception, first downs. Mel Kuyper says, Todd McShay says, number five overall draft prospect come next spring. Showing his stuff there. And he is so rangy. And he's big, of course. At six foot four, 220 pounds. He kind of reminds me of the old SC safety, Taylor Mays. Just mm. huge. A little bit more fluid, though, and a little bit better speed, I think, than Taylor. Great I job agree. undercutting that route. A terrible decision by Jordan Travis. If you're going to take a chance, don't take it in the direction of number 14 in the white jersey. That young man can play some football. That's a great comparable, by the way, to say May. It's just a more fluid, more speedy version of him, but that body type at 6'4". And now Kyron Williams after the turnover, and Williams squares up those shoulders after going to the right side and makes his way ahead to the 43-yard line, a five-yard run there. Well, it feels a little bit like Notre Dame's kind of rocking this Florida State defense to sleep. At some point, you're going to get a play action, a heavy play action on the run and throw it over their head. Second and five, Cohn, his favorite target, Mayer. And a 41-yard touchdown to open up this game. When Mayer looks the part, doesn't he? He, he said to you the other day, he said, I just feel like my feet are faster now. Coaches have more confidence in me. I'm more of a leader. He's the real deal. Uh, he's very, very good. Great catch radius. Cohn on first down. Has time. Drives the ball downfield, but it was to the outside of Kevin Austin. And coverage came from Gant. Really need to just continue to feed Mayer. Because Michael Mayer right now, the tight end, Florida State doesn't have a guy that can cover. No. I mean, his size, his physicality, the way he can position his body and shield defenders while reeling in the catch. I don't care if you double cover him, fine. But there's not one-on-one -on -one matchup they can win. Second and ten. Cone is going to tuck and he's going to dive ahead. And it'll be third down from there. Florida State doesn't have a guy who can cover him. Hardly anybody in college. And maybe the best guy who can cover him is actually his teammate who just had the interception. <laughs> right, right. Kyle Hamilton. That may be the best guy to cover Michael Mayer. Yeah, but they have some interesting one on ones at practice, that's for sure. But that's the direction I'm looking. I mean, if I'm the fifth year senior quarterback, Jack Cone, I know who my war daddy is and man covers. And it's looking like man coverage right here from Florida State. So where you got to look? Right there, number 87. Third down and four. Cone wants more than a first down. And he gets it. Wrestling it away is Joe Wilkins as there's a fight for the ball. Touchdown, Joe Wilkins. 23-yard strike, Cone. To Wilkins. Rolling on the field is a touchdown. 
What a great job by Wilkins. The ball's thrown just slightly inside, but look at Wilkins run right in front of the defender and grab it and pull it away. Very, very strong in high pointing that football. Let it get into his body. The defender's in great position. But Wilkins wins the tug of war for the football in the end zone. Just an outstanding, outstanding Looking catch. on the field was a touchdown. That play is under further review. Just an outstanding catch from Wilkins in that 50-50 jump ball. It's not surprising that Joe Wilkins is the kind of guy that would win that battle for the ball because they got what they call the SWAT program in the summer up there in South Bend. The workouts where you're constantly challenged and tested and it was Joe Wilkins who was the high points earner for that SWAT program. Katie. Well as Joe Wilkins was running off the field after that touchdown Brian Kelly grabbed him by the shoulder pads and he said you can celebrate you can celebrate but do not go over the top that's how good you are do not be over the that's top the out there. The running on the field is confirmed. Confirmed as a touchdown. That was just a war right there between him and the defender. That's not going to be a battle that can be won very often. Wilkins is so strong and so physically gifted there on the perimeter. That's Travis Jay he was matched up with. The senior from North Fort Miles, Florida. Long drive up I-75 and over 10. But family and friends here to enjoy that. Notre Dame retakes the lead. Cone to Joe Wilkins. CrestWhiteSmile.com. Welcome back to the Capital One Sunday night kickoff as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Joe Wilkins, the 23-yard touchdown catch from Jack Cohn. Florida State had the 14-7 lead and then the 48-yard field goal by Dorr and that touchdown catch moments ago. And the Irish, number nine team in the country, back on top. An opportunity for us to check in with Kevin Nagandi. What's up, Kevin? Dish, good evening, by the way, Tess. Dish halftime report coming your way. And, of course, we'll take a closer look at Bryce Young's brilliant performance yesterday. We'll go beyond the numbers. Also, Booger McFarland on why the ACC should not panic right now. Two key top 20 showdowns next weekend. We will get you ready at the half. Back to you, Tess. I look forward to it. Bryce Young was sensational for Alabama against Miami yesterday. You know, we were down there. You're down there all the time. I was down there at spring practice. People said, oh, we'll see. We've got a lot of new pieces and Bill O'Brien and Doug Marone, <laughs> new offensive coordinator and offensive coaches. They look pl plenty fine. Plenty fine. Don't well, worry about all the new pieces at Alabama now. Yeah, Nick Saban's still there. Last time I checked. That makes a big difference. Bumbles the snap. Irish looked to jump on it. And instead, Florida State somehow able to recover it as Treshawn Ward finally falls on it. A loss of five. Wow. I mean, fortunate right there as the snap is way off the mark. And I don't know how Florida State got that ball back. Kind of lucky there. But, man, Florida State, so many mistakes. They've been behind the sticks almost all game long. Travis, here's the quick game, and it goes nowhere. Pokey Wilson is wrapped up by Isaiah Pryor. That is a loss of two. This looks like the way Florida State started the game. And Notre Dame's going to use a timeout. And that's smart to manage things here with this field position in a third and 17. Minute 39. Ball on the 18-yard line. Notre Dame uses timeout, hoping they can come up with a stop here on third and 17. Hey, let's take a peek at the Aflac trivia question, shall we? Aflac. It is Aflac. Greg, we're asking you, you got Kyle Hamilton. Just had an interception moments ago. I mentioned the fact that, you know, the guys have him as the number five overall prospect. So who's the last Notre Dame defensive player to be drafted in the top ten? They had nine draft picks last year. Yeah, I mean, I, I was... 
And we found out that that was the question. I'd never look. I've been racking my brain for yeah. all the possibilities. There's been so many great players, but I don't recall any off the top of my head that went in the top 10. So many great players. I just don't recall a top 10. Of course, Jalen Smith was one who I, I think would have potentially gone in the top 10 oh, had he course. not had the yeah. knee injury. But I, Man, there's so many great defensive players from Notre Dame over the years. Well, here's a third and 17. Notre Dame still has a couple of timeouts to work with. Ward trying to get free, and he spins his way to the 30. So he goes for 12 yards there. And he'll use the timeout again as they'll have a minute 34 and Florida State punting. So, listen, I mean, Notre Dame's an NFL producing factory and constantly with the cycle of all the draft picks. But we said last defensive player to go in the top 10. Kyle Hamilton projected to be top 10 come next spring. Wow. All the way back to 1994. Bryant Young. I'm I am shocked. I thought there was definitely one in the 21st century. I'm shocked that it's been that long. This defense has a lot of talented players on it that are getting their opportunity now. Hamilton's an absolute superstar in every way. The kind of guy also who doesn't really crave attention. He's a unique character. Very, very smart. Mastro Romano seeing if he can flip the field again. Kyron Williams playing special teams. He's the punt returner. And calls for the fair catch at the 32-yard line. So Notre Dame will be able to manage things offensively here in the final minute and a half. Well, they need to account for Jermaine Johnson. The transfer from George has been everywhere tonight. It's been a factor not just against the run, but also has been excellent in his pass rush as well. He's the type of instant impact transfer that Florida State's been looking for. He's as advertised. He's big, he's long, he's physical, and he has been making some noise in the first half. So here in an obvious passing situation, watch out for number 11 wearing the garnet because that young man in a one-on-one -on -one pass rush situation has been a handful all night tonight. So Jack Cohn takes the field. Grad student, the transfer from Wisconsin. He's already got a couple touchdown passes tonight. 12 to 16. Minute 55. He's got a timeout to work with. As Notre Dame looks for more before the half. As he checks down underneath to Chris Tyree. And Tyree is wrapped up. And that was Amari Gaynor, who was the leading tackler a year ago with the tackle here. Yeah, great job there by Gaynor. And bring it down Tyree. He doesn't make that tackle. A lot of room. Cone. It's going to go to Tyree again. And again he has met. This time it's Sidney Williams. So they will use that timeout. You know, Notre Dame's gotten to the point as a program. Last year, obviously, a playoff team. A team that was right there at the top, make it to the Rose Bowl game, play against Alabama. Nine draft picks. We were just talking about Notre Dame and success right. as a draft factory. But they've been recruiting so well, and they've yeah. been recruiting to their identity of the for type sure. of players yep. that work for them. Great offensive linemen. Star tight ends. Good, solid quarterback play in these defensive backs. So they don't necessarily have to have these dips. No. They can just reload, put the next group out there, and you got all these great players ready to go. Yeah, and I, I think that the development within this program is they're now getting to a point where they can have instant impact yes. freshmen. It was not the case all that long ago where you saw five or six guys on their roster that are 18 years old that are capable of playing at a remarkably high level. Now, last year, you have a couple of first-year players in Michael Mayer, Kyron Williams. We already know that Blake Fisher, the left tackle, is a true freshman. I mean, they have a lot of young players and they've been able to attract excellent quality out of the high school ranks for quite some time. Third down and five. Crowd's getting loud, looking for a stop. Cone going all the way downfield and just denied at the last second. He wanted Lindsey, and Travis J defended it. Really nice there by Travis J. A good job by this Florida State defense. Reeling just a little bit. Look at the recovery. Jay with his eye on the ball the entire time. 
Not trying to cover the receiver, obviously. Trying to play the football in the air. It's a great job of getting a hand on it, knocking it down, and killing that end of half two minute operation. Travis Jay will stay out there as the punt returner for the Knowles. Bramblett's fourth punt of the night for the Irish. Fair catch at the 26. Hey, next Saturday, college football on ABC. We'll get going at 4.30. It's a good one. Up in Ames. Number 18, Iowa, taking on number 7, Iowa State. I love the way Iowa looks. Yes, that is a team to contend with. And then at 8 o'clock, it is Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines against Washington. That was a shocker what happened to Washington. How much game day is going to be at Ames, Iowa? Iowa, Iowa State at 4.30 on ABC. Can't wait for next week. I, if I'm Florida State here, I'm not taking any unnecessary risk. Look, down three, your quarterback just a little while ago threw a really bad interception. I don't want to make anything worse. Just get to the half. They go with the shovel and Corbin. And Corbin goes for nine and a half yards. Now keep in mind, three timeouts to work with here. Yep. So and you get a real good positive play on first down. Maybe you see what you can do. Yeah. See, if you if you squeak one, you get it close to midfield. Then you start to get into a little operation with your timeouts. And he will look to pass. He's spinning the wrong direction, and he's taken down. And that is Foskey again. Talking about a guy who has the look of a first-round pick. 6'5", 260, and he can run like that. Isaiah Foskey. Four sacks for Notre Dame. In the first half, that'll come to an end. I had the Irish coming out on fire with Jack Cohn making his Notre Dame debut and connecting with Mayer for 41 yards. Hamilton came up with the interception. Cohn capped that first half with a touchdown to Wilkins. Florida State, I'll tell you, listen, if you watch this team in recent years, you watch this first half, they look different. It feels different down here in Tallahassee. This is a tough test with a top 10 Irish team coming off the college football playoff appearance. But Florida State's got a little fight to them. That defensive line is different now. No, they're physical, man. They're playing hard, but they got to eliminate the mistakes. Lost yardage on first and 10. Penalties. You cannot have that happen in the second half of this game. Katie is with Mike Norvell. Mike, you found the end zone twice, but you've made some mistakes on the offensive side, putting you behind the sticks often. How will you address those issues at half? Uh, you know, we've got to clean it, clean up uh, you know, some things for communication. We gave up some negative plays. Uh, got to continue to work on our protection. And we, we gotta, uh, we've had some big plays in the run game. we got to get back to that and uh, you know, continue to sustain those drives. Jermaine Johnson's been a force on the edge. How would you assess the defensive play through the first half? You know, I like the way they're playing. They're flying around. We've had a couple mistakes that have cost us, but uh, you know, we got to come back, clean that up, and uh, excited about the second half ahead. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Test. Got to clean up six penalties on Florida State in that first half. The big play came from Corbin. That sensational 89-yard run. And we got a fun second half ahead, don't we, folks, on this spectacular weekend, opening weekend of college football. Welcome home to this great game. The Dish Halftime Report is still to come after these messages. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Glad you're with us for the Capital One Sunday night kickoff here in Tallahassee as we continue Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Katie George with you. This was an incredible scene just moments ago as the band played Amazing Grace and spelled out Bobby. Honor memory the late Bobby Bowden 17 to 14 Irish on top Florida State had the big 89 yard touchdown then they had the Jordan Travis touchdown and then the Irish roared back before the half and a good return by Corey Wren all right here's the deal now, the ball came out at the end there, Irish are claiming they have it. Let's see what they do at the bottom of this pile.
Irish football. So Wren, after that great return, as he was going down, the ball came out. Recovered by Notre Dame. Boy, the body language of Wren and the players said otherwise, but Tariq Bracey comes up with the fumble recovery on this kickoff return really to field. start the second half. Fumble recovered by Notre Dame. Players under further review. Let's see here. Watch Wren at the end of this play. When does the ball come out? Well, that is tough to see. Ooh. You see, it looked like his body was on the ground when all of a sudden it did. It, it looked stripped. Yeah, it looks like those knees are down right there. It's down. Where's the ball at down. that point? Looks like it's still being held by Red at that point. I'd be surprised if after looking at it initially, this isn't overturned. The only thing I will say, and yes, it looks like that, is the fact that both players have their backs to the camera angles right. we're showing. You can't see the ball. You can't tell. You can tell. Now, this may be better. You can tell that there's the pull of the ball. There you go. Yeah. When does the ball start to become dislodged? It's hard to tell from those looks, but right there, it looks like he still has grasp yes. of the football. Of course, it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn beyond all doubt, but to me, that look indicates that he's down and still has possession of the football at that moment. Let's bring in our rules expert, John Perry. John, what do you say about this? Well, two things. Number one, this view right there with that right knee down, ball in that right elbow, I like it as down by contact, not a fumble. But you're right. We have to have clear and obvious visual evidence to overturn. John, I think you make a great point there because, listen, we could sit here and talk about body language, the pulling of the ball, but you pointing out the knee and still seeing that gap with the ball in the hand, now we will see if Ralph Pickett, the replay official, and the ACC referee, Jeff Flanagan, come to that same conclusion that John Perry, the rules expert, three-time Super Bowl referee and longtime Big Ten referee, has come to. Ruling on the field of fumble. Ruling on the field is Notre Dame football. There's the knee. John says you can still see the ball, and then it's the pull. I think it's fairly clear. I, I know you have to have indisputable, but that to me, and if you want Florida State's take on it, their offense is taking the field right now, as is Notre Dame's defense. So right. they certainly seem to think that this call will be overturned. Mike Norvell told Katie George a lot of things we had to clean up after that first half. Took the big play to get them back in it. After further review, the runner was down at the 37 yard line. Florida State will keep the ball first down on the left pass. Second review tonight, and both have been overturned. Trayshawn Ward in the backfield with Jordan Travis. And now he's going to hand off to Toa Feely. And Toa Feely works his way to the 39-yard line. So, Greg, you, you watch that first half of Florida State. And they get the one big play, the 89-yarder from Corbin. But then the other 25 plays went for only 63 yards. One play, 89 yards. 25 other plays. 63 yards. Yeah, the problem is with so many of those plays were actually negative yardage plays, playing way behind the sticks almost the entire first half. Second and seven. And as Travis just dancing his way, trying to get anything, he only comes up with one yard. It'll be third and six. That was Isaiah Foskey. He's been very active for the Notre Dame defense, making a tackle there. Well, he has, and this has not been a good down and distance for Jordan Travis in this Florida State offense. If you look at this offensive line, they've really struggled with the surge in the middle of that pass rush for Notre Dame, they have to be able to hold their ground and give their quarterback some time for those receivers to uncover. See defensive coordinator Marcus Freeman jumping around, putting out the call. He's an aggressive, attacking-style defensive coordinator. Let's see if they get after Jordan Travis here. Third and six. And one of six on third downs. Travis downfield's got a man.
up with a fire call, and it's incomplete. That was Alex Mastromano, the holder. That snap from Garrett Murray, so it stays 20 to 17. But here's what matters most. Jordan Travis, the offensive coordinator Kenny Dillingham says he's different now, and he can put it downfield. Did he ever? Right into the hands of Ja'Kai Douglas for a 60-yard touchdown and a Florida State lead again over number nine. You'd never want leftover food residue. Premier September 20th on ABC. Joe Brink and Katie back here in Tallahassee. What a game we've got now. 20 to 17. Ja'Kai Douglas just had the 60-yard touchdown catch. Our third lead change tonight, Greg. All right, let's take a look at the route. It was just a slot fade, nothing crazy, but what made this great was the eyes from Jordan Travis. And look at the impact that it has on the All-American Kyle Hamilton. Hamilton actually works a little bit to his left. He's got one-on-one. -on -one. He knows he's got speed in the slot. He drops it in the bucket beautifully. But let's look at the eyes of Jordan Travis and the influence that it has on the safety. Look at the eyes start to the right. And look, number 14, Kyle Hamilton actually moves that way, gives you extra time, and then you drop it in the bucket downfield that was excellent job of manipulating a defender with your eyes and how you can get him going in the direction that you absolutely want him to go when the coaches say a quarterback has made remarkable growth that's a prime example you know what else has grown here the noise and Notre Dame just used a timeout this is the way the dope used to be it is loud. Bobby Bowden Field at Dope Campbell Stadium. First game since the passing of the legend, and the Knowles are out in front. Welcome to Allstate. Sing direct TV stream with no annual contract. Greg, you up for the Capital One rewarding performance? I am. Take it away. <laughs> How about Jack Cohn in the start first? game as the starter for the Irish and he has been very dialed in kind of shocking when I get at halftime and I look at his stats he's 14 and 19 for 160 and two touchdowns has had a couple drops too Michael Mayer had a drop Kyron Williams so he's played really well smart and has been very efficient throughout the first 30 minutes of this football game I remember how loud it was moments ago they used the timeout coming out to start this drive and now it's even louder Pressure on Cone. He walks it downfield and was looking for Austin, who comes up with the catch. Kevin Austin, big target at 6'2", 215. Couple years of non-action, but now he's looked healthy and great, very strong. Yeah, and the Irish need to snap it quick because they're going to take a look at this. I think he caught it, but man, he was bobbling it as he went to the ground. And they do snap it quickly, and they get it quickly to Kyron Williams. Katie. Well, guys, I spoke with Brian Kelly as he exited the locker room. He said he's really happy with Jack Cohn's play. To your point, Greg, he said he's getting the ball to the right players. But he said on third downs, they have to make fewer mistakes. So he wasn't happy with the third down plays. And then defensively, he said, at that point of our conversation, we've only given up one play, the Corbin touchdown. We'll now make that two. He did say he liked how his defense settled in after Corbin's 89-yarder. They'll need to resettle themselves after that big one as well. No doubt about that. So interesting. The two scoring plays for Florida State, 149 yards. Those two big moments. Second and four. Williams bounces it, but is met. That was Jarvis Brownlee Jr. coming up to meet Kyron Williams. Third down and one. It's a great hit there. But these are the down and distances on third and one. Boom. How about it? Tell you what, this, the Florida State defense has been physical tonight, more physical than we've seen the last couple years. But here, critical down in distance, third and one. Notre Dame's offensive line without their starting left tackle. Let's see if we take that into account with where they try to insert here on third and short. Mike Fisher, freshman starting left tackle, out for the remainder of the game. Michael Carmody steps in. Third and one. Cone to pass on third and one. He's going to go deep. And into the hand of Austin for a touchdown. Back and forth we go in Tallahassee.
Tallahassee. Irish on top again. 37 yards. Jack, don't call me game manager. Cone with two beautiful deep balls on that drive. How about the catch there from Kevin Austin? But my goodness, the quarterback dropping it in the bucket perfectly. What an answer from Notre Dame after the great first drive from Florida State. Only took four plays and 75 yards. Kevin Austin is a guy who they felt would break out. And he's had a choppy career. He was suspended his entire sophomore year. And then last year had a foot injury and missed just about all of last year. But so many around the program, you talk to coaches, you talk to those who are around the program day in, day out, they say, hey, this may be the most improved player. And he's always had the physical traits, the ability, and now you see it coming together. And what a weapon he could be for the Irish this season. And it would be huge if he can come along and get to the point where he's a true alpha mm -hmm. dog out there. Because you already know you have difference makers at tight end. Michael Mayer is as good as there is in college football in the passing game contributing as a tight end. And then you couple that with Kyron Williams and how he can be utilized in the slot. And you get Tyree out there too with the big home run hitting threat potentially at running back. And then if you can bring along that wide receiver, that would be enormous. So man, it's been a great showing from Kevin Austin. Just got to keep the pedal pressed because they're going to continue to see some man coverage from the Seminoles. Four twenty. Listen, Ian Book won a lot of football games at Notre Dame. Winning his player, quarterback in history, brought him to the college football playoff. And here comes this guy, the guy, Jack Cohn, who, folks, when he was in ninth grade, he committed to play lacrosse at Notre Dame. He's from Saville, New York. He's from Strong Island, a lax player. <laughs> they say he's a game manager at Wisconsin. That offense brings him to a Rose Bowl. This isn't a game manager tonight. This is a guy with three touchdown passes who's looking the park. Yeah, maybe the difference between a game manager and a superstar is just opportunity. And it's pretty much been the story for Cone tonight. Very efficient, very accurate, making good decisions, getting the ball out. Really been impressed by this young man. Short pitch to Corbin. Corbin. And look at that pursuit down the line by the Irish as Cam Hart was getting involved. And so far here, early in the second half, it's been good, much better by Florida State in the pre-snap and on first down. Cannot play behind the sticks against a defense like this. Picked up the pressure from the middle linebacker, White. Downfield, and Hamilton again coming over from that safety position and making the interception. Flag is down, ripped off his helmet as Hamilton came tracking that ball really on the field is an interception by Notre Dame after the play unsportsmanlike conduct number 14 of Notre Dame for removing the helmet that's a 15 yard penalty that is his first unsportsmanlike conduct foul Notre Dame's ball first down how about the All-American. He's on the far hash. He gets all the way to the opposite sideline. Look at the close. I mean, when the ball is in the air, he's on the near hash. Still has to go almost 20 yards to catch that football. Unbelievable. Look him turn on the Jets and track it. Never loses sight of the football. Knows where he's at on the field. Make sure he drags the toes. This young man is a playmaker. What an unbelievable job by the safety. Two interceptions tonight from the first team preseason All-America. Kyle Hamilton. He's got seven in his career now. Brian Kelly simply refers to him as the eraser in the middle of that defense backfield. That's ridiculous right there. I mean, that's, I mean, easy with the comparisons, right? But that's Ed Reed style. Like Ed Reed used to pick passes off from the opposite half. That does not happen very often. That was an unbelievable play. You just mentioned Ed Reed. You just mentioned one of the greatest to ever play the position. And 
Mahomes. Williams, he's taken down for a loss. Katie, you and I had a conversation with him a few nights ago where some big-time names did come up, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Greg, it's so funny you mentioned Ed Reed. I asked Kyle to build the perfect safety. Categories and selections were totally up to him. He said, for somebody who's incredibly athletic, I take Sean Taylor's athleticism, pair that with Tyron Matthews' instincts and feel for the game. He loves Jamal Adams' sideline to sideline speed, giving them the ability to cover so much ground. And he said, give me that Ed Reed mentality. And right now, Jack Cohn is getting a big dose of the Florida State rush. John Fuller coming in hard on Cone. Watch Fuller. And remember, the left tackle for Notre Dame, the true freshman, Blake Fisher, not in the game. So they got a backup left tackle in. He doesn't get wide enough. He doesn't leave his guard until the guy's almost by him. Laid off the ball. It's and Fuller's untouched happen. around Carmody there. Can't happen. Third and 17 after the sack by Fuller. Cone sets up the screen to Williams on third and 17 and Williams is breaking free and look at the receivers blocking downfield explosive play for the Irish on third and 17 just an unbelievably great call from Tommy Reese as you see the screen Florida State brings pressure that's exactly what you want as soon as those blitzers are coming you just buy a little time as a quarterback, you float it right over their head, and there is not a single Seminole player in the position to make a play. Excellent call there by the offensive coordinator, Tommy Reese. 55 yards from Kyron Williams. What did BK say about Cone being calming, being a calming presence? And Tommy Reese has developed such a great relationship with Tommy Reese. There he is, the 29-year-old offensive, offensive coordinator. It's a false start on Notre Dame. The former starting quarterback, of course. You, you talk about season openers. Tommy actually has the record for passing yards in a season opener for the Irish. He had 346 against Temple eight years ago. Cone right now has got 287. But they've developed a wonderful relationship. It's so relatable, everything Tommy's been through, and then Jack comes into the program and has to deal with these unique pressures. And gets it to the outside, and that is Austin. And Austin makes a cut to the inside and has a first down. It'll be first and goal, Notre Dame. Greg, you blink, and you go from third and 17 to first and goal. Amazing. It's all about big plays and the big play potential of this offense. So many weapons, so many things that you have to defend, so many different looks. I mean, for instance, right now, three tight ends on the field and a running back. And this is a difficult personnel group to match up with, with only one wide receiver, Avery Davis, down here at the bottom. 13 personnel with three tight ends. They're going to pass out of that on first and goal. Williams in the flat, ridden out after just a gain of a yard. That was Cortez Andrews who had coverage on Kyron Williams, second and goal. Yeah, 13 personnel, you're thinking they run the ball, right? That's a run formation more often than not. Not for Notre Dame. <laughs> They'll get in the run formation to personnel groupings and throw you out of it. So it's difficult to substitute against. They give you so many different looks and they have so many unique bodies that present matchup problems with some of their personnel groups that they could have on the field at all times. And big number 87 is in the game. Michael Mayer, star tight end bunched up near side here second and goal Williams looking for a crease looking for a push and as the whistles blow as he was eh, maybe just short of the five yard line three yards there It'll be third and goal there's Adam Fuller defensive coordinator at Florida State and seen this influx of talent to the defensive line he needs it to show up here Johnson Thomas he's got Dennis Briggs back Needs to account now for the tight end, Michael Mayer. In this part of the field, a condensed part of the field, I want my longest weapons. I'm looking in the direction of the outstanding tight end, likely All-American, especially if I can get a one-on-one -on -one situation high in the back of the end zone. Let his big body reach up and pluck it out of the sky. Already has five catches, 89 yards, and a touchdown tonight. Third and goal. Out of the backfield is Williams. One cut, a second, a stiff arm working for the pylon and gets it. Six-yard touchdown. Cone to Williams. Jack Cone has four 
touchdown passes in his Notre Dame debut. And just a mess on the inside. You got Williams that jumps leverage out in the flat, makes one guy miss, and then buries the second. What an outstanding individual effort there from Williams on the throw from Cone. Reminder of an extra point goes through. It is an 11 point lead for the Irish. Look at those numbers for Jack Cohn. Just a lax player from Long Island. Yeah, right. This is who we are. Capital One's Sunday night kickoff on ABC is brought to you by DoorDash. Get more from your neighborhood. Hot, humid night in Tallahassee. And I'll tell you what else is hot. That Notre Dame passing attack with Jack Cohn. He's 21 of 26. He's gone for 311 and four touchdowns. This season, Taco Bell is welcoming back one of the best parts of college football, the student sections. Litmoff Student Section of the Year contest has returned. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. They were here early, too. Oh, I mean, did you see the tailgating? You were oh at the hotel window. And, I, I saw yeah. tailgating two days ago. Where, I mean, it has been a weekend here in Tallahassee, man. And everyone is so excited for football to return. And what an atmosphere they've created for their Seminoles tonight. Need to answer, though. Jordan Travis. Trying to find something, trying to move that pocket because he has been chased down time and again. But they got to find some methodical things that he's comfortable with, whether it's quick game, a hitch here, a little short pass here. I thought we'd see more of the quick game I'm tonight. I'm really surprised with Pokey by Wilson. It. I'm really surprised. And granted, hey, they're going against a very aggressive defense that wants to play a lot of man coverage. It's going to get up in your face and challenge your wide receivers. But I, I think they need to get a little bit more in the passing game for him that he's comfortable with to keep him in rhythm. Because right now, just doesn't have a whole lot of rhythm to the passing game. We're going to get a direct snap here to Jay Sean Corbin as Travis split out. Corbin patiently waiting for something, and then he turns the corner and goes ahead to the 30-yard line. Corbin had the 89-yard touchdown run. They had two scoring plays. They got the 89-yard touchdown run in the 60-yard touchdown run. So that's 149 yards of their 222 total yards. And this might be something that they stick with for here, here for a couple minutes. This position group, this wildcat that they're trying to run, puts you in a bind defensively. Third and five, Corbin again. And the defense able to fit it up perfectly. As he drives the legs ahead, it'll be fourth down from there. When looking at that drive right there, some of the calls is they're going to keep the offense on the field. What what is this? Wow, a little surprised at this point. They're at, and you're still in it. Defense is playing good, man. This is aggressive. They're at their own 33-yard line, and they're going for it on fourth and two. Fourth and two from their own 33-yard line. Jordan Travis to pass. Has to have it. And instead it is intercepted. Clarence Lewis with the interception as Mike Norvell goes wildcat, wildcat, and then passes on fourth and two from their own 33. And the ball is batted and picked off. Clarence Lewis with the interception. Yep, sums it up, doesn't it, that look? Yeah, this right here, just trying to get and jump leverage, thinking you're going to get Cam McDonald right in the flat immediately. However, Cam Hart, the corner for Notre Dame, does a great job of not buying the fake inside, staying wide as the widest, and forcing Jordan Travis's eyes to come back to his secondary target. It's just an excellent job by Notre Dame's defense being super aware of what the look was going to be in the backfield 
and not giving up that easy completion for a first down. Midway through the third quarter, and they took that desperate measure. And now Cohn back to work and back to business. Lindsay, first and goal. Irish flag is down. We will check on that. But Cohn wasting no time. It's striking to that second level for 24 yards. Personal foul. Face mask number 23, defense. The penalty would be half the distance to the goal. There's an automatic first down. The player whose helmet came off may remain in the game. And just for frustration there from Sidney Williams. As they're tackling, Lindsey grabs the face mask and rips the helmet off. And one of the big stories in college football this year are the new quarterbacks, you know, in new places and guys taking over big jobs. And th this was one of them, Jack Cohn. What would it be like as the Irish starting quarterback? You're getting the answer, aren't you? Williams to the one-yard line. Or, excuse me, Tyree with the carry that time. Now, Cohn, 22 of 27, 335 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. He has been excellent throughout the course of the night. Really smart at the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of negative plays. Very efficient here for the Irish. Chris Tyree in the backfield, second and goal. Straight ahead and straight in. Touchdown, Irish. Florida State goes for it on fourth down. Turns the ball over. Irish take advantage. Cone strikes downfield, and they push it right in. And all of a sudden, they've pushed that lead to the way you thought it would be. This Notre Dame team is just so physical, man. I mean, they just wear on you and wear on you. And now that their quarterback has come along, this is going to be a very difficult team to defend. And that offensive line test is only going to get better. A lot mm -hmm. of new faces up there have had their a few issues at times tonight, especially with number 11, Jermaine Johnson. But... And this is a group that's best football's in front of them. Now they lost four starters, but they've got talent replacing them. they got an All-America who transferred in and Kane Madden at the right guard. they got a freak freshman who we're not seeing here in the second half, but you know he's going to be something special at left tackle. And, of course, Patterson there at the center who's going to be heading off to the NFL as a projected first-round pick. And then just that philosophy they have of knowing what they can do and knowing how they want to get their business done. They've been doing that for years, churning out offensive linemen to the league. What I love about Notre Dame, and, and people people have said, well, there's been people have said, well, they, they haven't played well in the big game. But what I've loved about watching this team over the last six or seven years is that if you make a mistake, they will make you pay. They don't make mistakes. This is a well-coached football team. Brian Kelly does a remarkably good job. The results have been staggeringly impressive. And now the quality of player that they're able to attract is improving as well. So this is a team that's going nowhere. Yeah, they lost a lot of pieces off last year's team. All-time winning as quarterback in the history of the school. All these things, all these question marks, they've answered them all tonight. And I, like I said, I think this is a team that's best football is going to be coming in the weeks to come. Reminder, it's another big Saturday of college football on ABC coming up. At 4.30, it is a good one. It is a rivalry, and I'm telling you, these two teams are prime. Iowa and Iowa State. 4.30 from Ames. College game day is going to be in Ames, Iowa. And then at 8 o'clock, it is Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. And Michigan and Washington get together. College football rankings are brought to you by PlayStation. Yeah, and you look at all the teams that played yesterday, and throughout the course of the weekend. Outside of Alabama, everyone kind of showcased maybe a flaw or two here and there. So a lot of things to build upon. This week's rankings are great. Next week's rankings are really going to be reflective of what we saw this week. And, and I think there's going to be a lot of teams that grow tremendously from week one to week two like they always do. Well, let me tell you something. You look at those rankings, and I, I listen, you see a win out of Oklahoma. Can we give a little credit to Tulane and the effort they oh, put goodness. forth? And, 
You know, they were so spirited. I, I listened to Spencer Rattler after that game, the you know, one of the Heisman favorites, the quarterback. He said, Tulane was the hardest hitting team I've ever played. And those Tulane players, they were playing for a lot. Folks back home in Louisiana, they've been through so much in recent weeks. There's the catch downfield from Keyshawn Helton, but you know, Tulane players are saying, we got to be tough like our people back home in Louisiana. That's how they played yesterday against Oklahoma. Yeah, Willie Fritz is an excellent coach, man, and he's built a program there that will fight you every single week. They've got to give them a lot of credit. Gave Oklahoma all they wanted and some more. 17 yards, Travis to Helton. First down for Florida State. Jordan Travis able to escape and then he is taken down and that was Howard Cross the third of course familiar name for those folks who are Giants fan he went to St. Joe's Regional back in New Jersey and he is the son of the former Giants Super Bowl champion Howard Cross Jr. Yeah, he's an impressive young man a little undersized but really quick <laughs> he's like I mean really quick not quite Aaron Donald but similar in his size here's Treshawn Ward and now all of a sudden Florida State's finding a little something on offense when they're down 18 that last series they had where they went wildcat and they went for on a fourth down that felt like a moment of a dagger and notre dame capitalized and now they're trying to see if they can get back in this thing 19 yards there from ward and notre dame only three different defensive linemen on the field so expect florida state to try challenging in the run game <laughs> Notre Dame's not playing prevent or anything, but definitely dropping back, trying to keep the ball in front of them and see and dare Florida State to try to move the ball methodically. Second and eight. Ward. Always his shoulder. Maybe third and long, two. You know, Marcus Freeman's done a nice job here with this Notre Dame defense. Clark Lee left to become the Vanderbilt head coach. And Marcus was the defensive coordinator for Luke Fickle's Cincy team. And he was one of the real, you know, you talk about the market being hot and who you want on your staff. That was Marcus Freeman this offseason. LSU was going mad for him. Flew him down there, said, you got to let us know. We're not letting you on the plane until you let us know. And then Brian Kelly said, money's not going to be an issue. <laughs> Life is going to be just fine. You'll be well right. rewarded. And yeah. He loves being a part of this Irish staff. Yeah, he is such an impressive guy. And having covered him for years, man, what I've been most amazed with is how he connects with the players. He meets the players where they are. And he always, always at Cincinnati and even in previous stops, those guys play with their hair on fire mm -hmm. every single week. <laughs> they might be outclassed sometimes. It could happen. But my goodness, will they play with tremendous effort. Marcus Freeman demands that of them. Here's a fourth and two with Corbin taking a direct snap. And Corbin's going to move the chains. So it'll be a first down for Florida State as he goes for four yards. And converts there on fourth and two. There's still a lot of time left in this game. Which is why it's so surprising the decision that was made when they were back at their own 33. Right. To play that desperate, make that desperate of a decision then, considering how much time. When you still look at that clock and know, hey, they could score here, manage things, but felt like the desperation set in just a little earlier. Corbin again and dragging that time Clarence Lewis for a couple extra yards. Nine yards there. Corbin's putting together a pretty good looking night right now. He's got. 118 yards. Of course, he had the big gasher for 89. Yeah, and it's nice to have him fully healthy. I mean, he's going to get a ton of opportunities in this offense, especially knowing that his quarterback's a run threat as well. Second and one. This time he just spins back to the line of scrimmage. Houston Griffith with the tackle. He's had a lot of game experience at Notre Dame. This is 37th game. There is Houston. You know, he, interest, he went into the transfer portal at the end of last season and then came back, stayed at Notre Dame. And he's a big part of what they want to accomplish in that back end. I mean, if I'm Florida State, I'm just running the ball right now, man. Three defensive linemen on the field, just challenge them. Run the rock. Third and one, they will do that, and in doing so, they will have another first down. 
what I'm trying to figure out, George Travis has had a couple nice moments tonight, but for the most part, he's been pretty erratic in the passing game. If I'm Marcus Freeman, I understand the circumstances of the game. I don't want to give up any more big plays. But the one thing Florida State can do is run the ball. Why don't I have a more heavy run set up front defensively to try to take away what they do best? And they do it here with great results. It's going to be first and goal, Knowles. Well, your point being proven true. 12 more yards there on the ground. Quickly to the line. First and goal. Jordan Travis, as he kept it himself, just tried to make it beyond that line. They're going to be knocking on the door when they start the fourth quarter. Try to cut into that Notre Dame lead when we come back. A third quarter that saw the Irish jump out with Jack Cohn leading the way. They're up 18 as it stands now. The Capital One Sunday night kickoff returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Oh, you're doing it wrong. We are Western North Carolina. Start of the fourth quarter. Corbin, direct snap, trying to get in, and he slips down for a loss of one. Joe Greg and Katie with you here. Mike Norvell, the frustration you can see there. He's been they've been running the ball down, trailing by 18 against Notre Dame. Such a spirited effort to be in position. Four lead changes, and then the Irish jumped out with 21 points in the third quarter. And now the 15th play of this long drive for the Knowles, trying to cut into this lead. Well, the question is here: Do you run it now? I would run it. I mean, I don't necessarily trust. Jordan Travis is underneath accuracy. An orbit motion with Helton, and then the flag comes in. Snap infraction, number 51, offense. Five yard penalty, third down. That is just a killer. It is. I mean, can't happen. Absolutely can't happen at that part of the field. You have it at one point, just a couple plays ago, you're sitting at the one yard line. And now you've gone backwards a consecutive plays, and then you, of course, now find yourself in a very difficult third and goal situation from the eight, where yep. the windows are extremely tight. Third and goal now from the eight after the penalty. And a timeout is used by the Notre Dame defense. They have one timeout remaining. Babyon Johnson, who's the center there, and the penalty was on. He's the backup center. Maurice Smith, who is a freshman All-America, he's been dealing with a back injury. Reminder that this excellent, excellent opening weekend of college football, it continues tomorrow night. Chick-fil-A kickoff game, Louisville and Ole Miss. Reese and Kirk and Molly will be on the call from Atlanta. First meeting between Louisville and Ole Miss. And listen, if you didn't pay attention last year, Ole Miss, Matt Corral, he can sling it. And this is the guy who was voted preseason first team all SEC quarterback. You know what the offense is that Kiffin and the guys run there, but the stats from last season down the stretch. I mean, look what Matt Corral did. I mean, amazing. And Elijah Moore, how will they replace him at slot receiver now with the Jets? So it's going to be a different looking offense for Ole Miss, but still a ton of firepower. Third and goal. They bring pressure up the middle. Travis escapes somehow, looks to the end zone, and gets it. Touchdown to Andrew Parchman. Jordan Travis in that athleticism to stay alive. And then Andrew Parchman worked his way open, and the transfer from Kansas gets the touchdown. The all-out pressure from Notre Dame defensively, trying to bring three guys internally. And the one guy that was supposed to be unblocked doesn't get home. Great job by Jordan Travis getting back out the back door. And how about Parchment, the transfer from Kansas, bodying up the defensive back and making a play. Two-point attempt to try to make it a 10-point game. Travis, they swing it. Helton, and it gets in. 
Tyshawn Helton. So Florida State, the touchdown to Parchman. Two-point success with Helton. And we've got a 10-point game here in Tallahassee. A great drive from the Seminoles. Taking advantage of that light look that Notre Dame was giving them along the defensive line, saying, hey, man, if you're just going to have 3D linemen on the field, we're going to run it right down the field. And that's exactly what Florida State did. It was a great job, too, by their young quarterback in a difficult spot on third and goal from the 7 or 8, running around, buying some time, and allowing his receiver to uncover. Just a great answer from Florida State when things were starting to get away from him. That was a great drive. I mean, give credit to all parts of that offense. They were running the ball well. Big number 75, Dylan Gibbons, in that offensive line was doing their job against his former teammates. Gibbons played at Notre Dame. 29 games there and then transferred to Florida State. He's been a big part of what they've been able to do. Ten-point game. Jordan Travis, two touchdown passes on the night. Of course, he's got the three interceptions. Kyle Hamilton has two of them. And I told you we had an interesting story on Dylan Gibbons. Katie? Well, guys, when Gibbons was at Notre Dame, he cultivated a friendship with Irish superfan Timothy Donovan, who was born with Bacterol and Charcot Marie, too. When Gibbons decided to transfer to FSU, knowing his former team would make the trip to Tallahassee week one, he wanted to make sure Timothy and his parents could come here to watch this game. Travel for Timothy is difficult and expensive, so as soon as NIL was passed, Gibbons created a GoFundMe page, Take Timothy to Tally. Immediately, both fan bases jumped to support this endeavor. To date, Gibbons' efforts have raised over $51,000, not only covering the cost of this trip, but some of Timothy's medical expenses as well. Gibbons created a full itinerary for the Donovan family that included a pizza party with the Florida State football program. Timothy and his parents, Paul and Tim Sr., are in the stands tonight. Katie, I just love the story. And Greg, let me say this. This has been a summer where a lot of folks out there have railed on college football and the name, image, and likeness. And the game's not the same. And expansion, it's all about the money. Hey, here's a great example of what the game is, of how football matters, of how a young man sees it the right way and wants to help others. Yeah, it's amazing and just so cool that they've been able to cultivate that friendship. And it's amazing, it's amazing to see that that thing blossom. Second and eight. Cohen tucks, spins, and gets his way out to the 31-yard line. It'll be third and about four from there. So a four-year offensive lineman at Notre Dame comes down here and wants to do well for an Irish fan to come and have his dream trip. Well done, Dylan. Amazing. A critical down and distance here for Jack Cohn. Third and four. Got to get a first down as the momentum has certainly moved in the direction of the Seminoles. And the Knolls get a stop. Cohn. He goes to Mayer, and it's a first down for the Irish. Love that design. Just a simple bunch formation. I have my best weapon, receiving weapon that is, lined up in that bunch. And I just run basically a little wide hitch. Big old body, throw it right on his numbers. He falls down for the conversion. Just a nice design there from Tommy Reese. Good execution from the quarterback at tight end. Williams can test that left side. And he was tripped up that time. That was Jerry on Jones making the tackle. He's a transfer himself. Came over from Mississippi State a couple years ago. They need to go back at some point. A little misdirection. Maybe a bootleg. They had a nice one a little while ago on the last drive to Braden Lindsay. I think they can get back to that at some point because Notre Florida State is really flying to the football, so some misdirection could catch him off guard. Penalty flat comes down as Williams goes down because of D.J. Lundy knifing in.
holding offense number 55. That penalty will be declined. Third down. He's third down. sound echoes throughout the night and gets louder on third downs. 341 yards for Cone. Five more yards and it's the record in a Notre Dame season opener. It's his 29-year-old offensive coordinator who currently holds the record. Third and ten. Cone. Great pursuit by the Knowles. Sidney Williams was there to track him. And they will be hunting away. Florida State only down 10 with over 10 minutes to play. Just a great job by that Seminole defensive line, creating pressure, forcing Cohn out of the pocket, and then the back end, the coverage. There was no one available. He just had to tuck it and eat it. Great job there by the Seminole defense, locking down in coverage and forcing Cohn to be very uncomfortable there in the pocket. Travis J. Out on the return, here's the Bramblett punt. Flag is down as Bramblett went down. And definitely a lot of contact on Bramblett. Ja'Kai Douglas was in on special teams. He had the 60-yard touchdown earlier. Just a matter of is it a 5 or a 15? It was 4th and 9. Keep that in mind. Looked like a pretty good collision. And that's the snapper, so... Well, they had, they had five the block kicks last year. Remember, that was, that was her thing. The snapper's down on the field for Notre Dame, too, so you have a, potentially a backup long snapper going in. It was Milk Vinson who was down on the ground. Michael Milk Vincent. Let's take a look one more time. Tess, you're the special teams guy. Is that a 5 or a 15? I don't know. It looks like a line of contact. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the, punt, the punter's exposed with his leg fully up in the extension. Let's bring in John Perry. Joe, if the kicking foot is what is contacted, with the kicking foot up, it's five. If it's the plant leg, as it's coming down, it's 15. This, I believe, is contact to the kicking leg, which will be a five-yard penalty for running, not roughing. Let's see. Kicking leg, fully extended, contact there, and then spins around. And you see... Brian Kelly, clearly it's looking like it's going to be a five based on his reaction. He is beside himself. Five yards, running into the kicker. Defense number 55. A penalty big decline. First down. So with that, first down, Florida State. 10-19 to go in this game. They've cut it to 10. Can they find something here when we return to Tallahassee? While expecting, Jennifer discovered the checks Mix. 22nd on ABC. Excellent. Got a good one here as you're watching the ACC on ESPN. Joe, Greg, and Katie. 38 to 28, number nine, Notre Dame of Florida State's been fighting all night long. Notre Dame has won eight straight road games against ACC opponents. Net in the backfield is Perfili, but he shakes free and then stiff arms his way for a good gain of 10. You look at Notre Dame defensively, they're still in that same alignment from the previous drive. Three defensive linemen on the field, the Heinish in the middle, you have Tongabaloa uh, Amosa on the left. They keep it on the ground for two more yards with 
Katoa Feely drew white with the tackle. Drew white, a team captain, one of the steady leaders of that Irish defense. He has started 25 of their last 26 games. I just don't understand, Tess, why they're giving away, they're begging Florida State to run the ball when their quarterback has yet to prove that he's an effective passer in rhythm. Second and nine. Travis shakes free, and Travis can run. Can he ever stride it out? He's got real speed now, and you get a glimpse of it there. So a first down after the 25-yard run by Jordan Travis. Right, here's a view from our AT&T 5G Skycam as you see the left side of the defensive line, number 57, Adam Milola. He gets run down inside, loses contain, and there's nobody home on the perimeter for Travis as he escapes out to the left and creates a big play with his legs. An excellent job by the quarterback. Cam Hart is down. Medical staff is out to see the starting corner for the Irish, and we will step away. Capital One Sunday night kickoff on ABC is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Some great images from this weekend. How about Penn State and Wisconsin? That was a gritty game. And Oklahoma having to hold off Tulane. And then Christopher Smith and that pick six in Georgia against Clemson. That was a game that was just filled with such emotion. This game has had these ebbs and flows of emotion. I think Florida State's handling it so much better than they have in recent years. Yeah, Mike Norvell said that's the biggest difference is our team can handle the highs and the, and the lows so much better than they used to be able to. Pressure off the edge and it gets to Jordan Travis. They came with the blitz, the safety blitz with Houston Griffith. And Travis got to go pick up his hat. So which means Mackenzie Milton is going to come onto the field. Two years away from football, recovering from the devastating knee injury after his amazing career at UCF. Transferred here, one of the most incredible comeback stories that the sport has seen. Catastrophic knee injury that he suffered in November of 2018, and now he comes into the game here. Mackenzie Milton to pass. Welcome back to college football. was a top 10 Heisman finisher in 2017 and 2018, suffered the catastrophic knee injury. There was nerve damage, there was artery damage. His surgeon said it's a miracle that he would walk without pain. He's playing in this game right now. Milton, trying to escape, and he's taken down. And in fact, his surgeon is here tonight. Dr. Bruce Levy came here to Tallahassee. He said, I have to witness this. I have to see it. Saying, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm not aware of anyone who has done what McKenzie has done. They had to have three surgical teams to get him back to be able to do this. Hasn't played since November 23rd of 2018. Second and 13. Milton gives to Corbin. Corbin surges ahead on second and 13. It'll be third and about a long four. And Mackenzie Milton, interesting that he's staying in. As Jordan Travis obviously had his helmet knocked off, had to come out for one play, but Mackenzie's dealing a hot hand. Third and five, gives to Corbin. It's gonna be a first down for the Knowles. A guy who passed for 8,600 yards, 72 touchdowns, was one of the most dynamic players. Didn't know if he would ever even be able to take part in athletics again, let alone get back to this level of college football. Quickly gets it to the outside in good pursuit as Douglas was swarmed. That was DJ Brown with the tackle. Coming up on seven minutes to play, Knowles trailing by 10. And every time, Florida State throws it against this look defense 10. I kind of scratch my head because Notre Dame with the personnel they have on the field is just begging you to run the football. Let's see if they get back to it here on second and long. Former star at UCF now comes into the game. 
here in the fourth quarter for Florida State. Second and 12. Milton. And get it to Corbin. And Corbin tried to turn the corner. It'll be third down with six and a half minutes to play. Just a yard there. Right here, Mackenzie Milton. Veteran players played a ton of football. It's been a while, <laughs> but has played a ton of football. Got to be thinking about looking in the direction of a guy that you got to trust, and that's number six, Keyshawn Helton. He's down here in the slot. Let's see if they can find a matchup that's favorable for the veteran wide receiver. Third down and 11. Mackenzie Milton back to pass. Over the middle, gets it complete. Milton's got the hot hand, and it was Keyshawn Helton, and it's first and goal, Knowles, 15 yards. Milton to Helton. What a throw. Wow. He's got a little magic left in him, doesn't he? Quickly to the outside, Douglas trying to keep his balance. The flag is down. First and goal pass as Douglas gets it inside the two-yard line. Illegal substitution. Defense at 12 men on the field. After this is to the goal. First down. Let's go back to that throw that Kenzie Milton made. He gets hit, too. Welcome back to college football, Mackenzie Milton. But he was unfazed by it. How about this? Look at the throw. Over the linebacker in perfect stride, and his receiver makes a play. Just an unbelievable play there from Mackenzie Milton. We're going to go Wildcat here. Milton comes out to the near side. Ward's going to take the direct snap. Ward gets to the outside and gets in. What do we have here in Tallahassee? The comeback to the sport alone is improbable. The fact that a helmet came off to create the opportunity, improbable. And Mackenzie Milton coming into the game to do that? He brings the Knowles down the field, and with five and a half minutes to play, it's just a three-point game against the number nine team in the country. Don't go anywhere. You know how some carriers give you so little. Mackenzie Milton hasn't played a football game in 1,017 days. He just went four for four for 36 yards in coming into a pressure-packed game in the middle of the fourth quarter. Mackenzie Milton is lucky to walk without being in severe pain. That's how catastrophic the injury he suffered was. By all accounts, would have no chance to play the sport again. But Mike Jablonski and Bruce Levy and a medical team who was quick to attend to him and recognize the seriousness of artery damage and then three surgical teams who handled the complexity of vascular and nerve and ligament damage. They did their medical miracle. And then the kid worked his butt off and said, I'm determined. And here he is with high drama on a Sunday night with two of the great brand names of the sport going back and forth. Florida State was down 18. We got five and a half to play, and the Irish trying to answer now and win this ball game. Flag is down as Cone is pressured and throws it away. Katie? Guys, earlier this week, Mackenzie Milton told me regardless if he started or not, he would be ready for his first snap when the time came. He said he had visualized that moment over and over and over again, but he said it's one thing to visualize it. It's another thing to go out and actually do it. My goodness, what a drive by Mackenzie Milton. The best part about it, Jordan Travis was the first person to congratulate him as he ran off the field. I haven't been doing this long. That right there was one of the coolest sequences I've ever seen on the college football field. Just amazing, an amazing story. Just an incredible comeback from Mackenzie Milton. First down and five after the penalty. 
Kyron Williams patiently waiting and then is ridden down by Deloach. You said it well there, Greg. Magical moments. That's what I love about this sport. It's week one. And you have games like this. You have moments like that. Second and four, Cone to pass with time to the outside, but a little too far outside of his great target, Michael Mayer. And now it is third down and four, and let's just have you listen to what it sounds like when this place, Dope Campbell Stadium, is back to full capacity on a critical third down. Jack Cohn, and the Knowles are going to get the ball back. Fourth sack of the night from this reinvented Florida State defensive line. Here's Keir Thomas working off the left side against the backup left tackle, Carmody. Watch him just throw Carmody down as soon as Cohn starts to work to his left. And he drops the quarterback for a loss. What a sequence from Florida State's defense. Ramblett punts away. Fair catch inside the 30 by Travis J. Get those Disney script writers ready because Mackenzie Milton is coming in. 4-15 to play, trailing number nine by three. This is T-Mobile. Chicken sandwich taco from Taco Bell. Teresa and Mark Milton are watching their son, who they thought most likely will never play the sport again after the catastrophic right knee injury he suffered in November of 2018. But here's McKenzie, who came into the game and has the Knowles within three now. Corbin takes it ahead on first down three timeouts remain for florida state momentum with florida state look at mom she is holding on her husband she has been crying just watching her son get back to this point mckenzie gives to corbin corbin to the edge a stiff arm for drew white they'll be third and short obvious at this point don't have to go for it but Knowing that Mike Norvell went for it just a little over a quarter ago, I wouldn't be surprised that this was four down territory here. He went for it on fourth and two from his own 33-yard line halfway through the third quarter. Third down and two. They're going to take an official's timeout to reset the chains. Greg, you've been around the sport your whole life. You play the position. You've dealt with injuries. There are few players who have ever dealt with the significance of an injury of Mackenzie Milton just to see him out there on the field. And to see now the players around him rallying to support their guy is just truly remarkable. Third and two. Sprint left. Mackenzie Milton pressure. He shovel passes it, and he gets it done. That is Darian Williamson. Just ad-libbing, Mackenzie Milton finding a way anyway, and 12 yards and a first down for Florida State. As his mom exhales, my goodness, what a great play from Mackenzie. Milton looks left, tucks, runs on that reconstructed right knee. He tucks and runs and he has crossed midfield five yards for Mackenzie Milton and the Knowles we are coming up on three minutes to play so much poise for Mackenzie Milton that's two plays in a row in which the player wasn't there to throw it to immediately but he waited and he made a good decision with the ball in his hands second and five Ward Ward look at that Getting those pads low, driving the legs, moving the chains, and this this is really unique. Listen, you got a packed house again. It gets so quiet when McKenzie gets behind center there. 
and they wait to see what the result will be and it's been nothing but magic he's five for five for 48 yards and moving this team the upset minded Knowles down the field against the number nine team in the country Ward bounces it to the outside and here he goes and it's another first down for Florida State 12 yards there for Trey Sean Ward this Notre Dame defense is on their heels man Linebackers are trying to fit inside, and the running backs move into the outside. Florida State is just a step ahead of the Irish on every single snap. Florida State was down by 18. Mackenzie Milton. Pressure off the edge, and he gets around it. Fakes the throw, beats a man, and then goes down. Look at his mother, Teresa. Can you imagine her heart rate right now as she watches this? Two years removed from the sport. 1,017 days. Surgeons from the Mayo Clinic say he's a medical miracle to be able to even practice. Second and six. Toa Feely. He has taken down. Great pursuit that time. Down the line. Cam Hart comes up and makes the tackle. It's getting to the point now where you start to think about the There's clock, of course. Right now, Notre Dame, only one timeout remaining. And Florida State's going to take this thing down as far as they possibly can, knowing they're already in field goal range. You just have to be really smart if you're McKenzie. No negative plays here on third down. Third down and seven. Already in field goal range for Ryan Fitzgerald. Do we smell overtime or something north of that bad snap? And now field goal range threatened until he throws it away. Smart play by the veteran. Remember, 33 starts in his career at UCF. It's a great job by Mackenzie Milton right there. Bad snap, bad play. Defense won. You cannot, under any circumstance, take a negative play right there to make it tougher on your field goal kicker. He wisely collects himself, shows that poise that he showed the entire drive, and smartly throws it out of bounds to the sideline. Ryan Fitzgerald's best game in college came against Notre Dame. His career long came against Notre Dame. It was a 42-yarder. This a 43-yarder to tie it. Rosenberry the snap, Mastromano the hold, and Fitzgerald the steely nerves. Career long for him against the top 10 team in prime time. Great job from Fitzgerald. And up there in the stands, in this packed house at Dope Campbell. The family who came from Hawaii, moved to Florida, and now made the drive to Tallahassee to see if their son would get in the game. Well, he did, and he's been nearly flawless. And all of a sudden, from 18 points down, we've got Notre Dame and Florida State tied up at 38. Tonight's game track is brought to you by Cadillac. Jack Cohn, his Irish debut. He's been tracking towards an A-plus. We just haven't said his name much because it's been the great comeback of Mackenzie Milton. But 341 yards and four touchdowns, 
He's five yards away from setting the record for passing yards in a Notre Dame season opener. Biggest thing for him and the Irish offense right now, get the drive started. The first play is the most important play by far in a two-minute operation. Got to have something positive here. Home. They have one timeout remaining as he gets it to Mayer, who is ridden down immediately after making the catch. It's Jamie Robinson, the transfer from South Carolina. Jonathan Dorr, the kicker for Notre Dame, his career long is 52 yards. Did that in 2019 against USC. See if they can get him in position. Half a minute to play. Cohen. Over the middle. It's complete. And here's Mayer. Mayer goes up high and they're past midfield. One timeout remains. Clock stops with a first down. Of course, they can also clock it. Yeah, hang on to that timeout. Go clock it right now if you can, unless you have a play call that's ready to roll right now. 35-yard line would be the career long range. He wants more than that, but goes out of bounds well beyond the intended target, Kevin Austin. 11 seconds remain. They have the timeout in the bag. Will they get a shot, or will we have overtime? Right here. You can work the middle of the field because you have that timeout for the kicker. Jack's father looks on. See, Mike Norvell wanted the timeout. And he raced in on the near sideline, the Florida State head coach, and was able to get it. Something just felt a little different tonight, didn't it? Something about the night that they've been honoring Bobby Bowden the night when they get back to full capacity, when the roar of the war chant is echoing extra loud, and this place returns to its former glory of what the energy used to feel like, something felt a little different, didn't it? It did. It did all weekend. You just knew there was going to be something special tonight. And we had special performances on both teams. We've had great calls by both teams. We've had players that have factored into the game that we didn't anticipate seeing. One in particular that happens to be one of the best stories I've ever seen in the world of college football. And will we get a capper right now from Jack Cohn and the Irish? Time to work with because of the timeout. Can they get in range? Cohn over the middle and they do! Mayer couldn't hold on! That's incomplete! Notre Dame was that close to being in position to have a game-winning kick opportunity, and Michael Mayer could not hang on as he turned the corner. Oh, my goodness. You had the matchup you wanted. You had Michael Mayer working against Jamie Robinson. Man coverage, and he puts it right where it needs to go. Now it's going to come down to a Hail Mary. My goodness, that's one right there. You have the guy that you want, the target that you want. The ball placement was superb. And unfortunately, the sure-handed tight end couldn't bring it in. Notre Dame exhausts that last timeout. Speaking of exhausting, the right arms of Florida State fans all night long, and it has served them well. Greg, take us through it. Five seconds to go. Ball's on the 49-yard line. You got to buy some time, especially where you're at on the field. So don't be afraid to retreat a little bit if you need to. But you need to throw the ball four yards into the end zone. So from right now, where his toes are, he needs to throw the ball about 60 yards in the air. That'll give you the most room to potentially reel one in. He's got to buy some time to get there. He launches it, 
It's short of the end zone, and it is picked off. Travis J finishes off regulation with an interception. And for those of you yesterday who were sitting back saying, I can't get enough of this sport, it is so good. Well, guess what? You get more. When we come back, we're going to overtime. The upset seeking Knowles against the number nine Irish and Mackenzie Milton's comeback. Howdy, folks. Joe Theismann here. We got a change to our overtime rules in college football. So you know the deal with each team getting the possession from the 25, and you play match play. But you have to go for the two-point conversion after a touchdown, starting with the second overtime. It has been a wild night. And now the coin toss. Okay, gentlemen, welcome to overtime. Both teams have one timeout. Both teams still have a challenge, providing they have a timeout. Okay? We're going to flip the coin one time. Your choice is going to be offense, defense, or which end of the field. Okay? Notre Dame, you're the visiting team. You're going to make the call. You're calling tails. I'm going to let it hit the ground. You call tails. It is tails. Notre Dame wants to go on defense first. What, which end of the field do you want to play on? Okay? Notre Dame, you're back this way. Florida State, you're back this way. Florida State will start first and ten. The 25 yard line. Big story tonight is the unexpected return of Mackenzie Melton. Came into the game because Jordan Travis's helmet came off. And then he did this. He's been so incredibly poised, too. Delivering really accurate throws down the field. Right there, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable throw around a defender as he was getting hit. How about this, the patience to buy a little time to allow that shovel to come through. He's made really good decisions, and he has put a spark into this offense through the air that we didn't see throughout the course of the first three and a half quarters. He's been outstanding, and the poise and maturity has been on display the entire time. So Notre Dame won the toss. They elect, of course, to go on defense first. Milton and Corbin in the backfield. And straight ahead, as they have been committed to tonight, with Jay Sean Corbin. He sparked things very early with the 89-yard touchdown. And he has gone for 130 yards tonight and two touchdowns. And so far, Florida State offensively really has had everything they've wanted in the fourth quarter. Running it and throwing it with McKenzie at quarterback. Second and six. And, and he is driven back this time. It's going to be third down for McKenzie Milton and Knowles. Good job that time by Foskey. Plays that viper position for Notre Dame. Jack Cohn anxiously awaits his turn. Dylan Gibbons is down injured. Dylan Gibbons, the former Notre Dame player who Katie told us that incredible story of his big heart and the GoFundMe fund help young Timothy Donovan who suffers from a rare medical condition. And Timothy is here at Doak Campbell Stadium tonight because of Dylan's efforts. And there is Timothy. Heartwarming story. Uh, they developed a relationship when Timothy, a huge Notre Dame fan. Dylan was playing for the Irish as an outstanding young man, and he said, I, I want to take care of him. I want him to come see me and see this great game. Now, medical staff out there for the big 321 pounder, the starting left guard. The third down and four when they get back to business. Mike Norvell was so confident in what Jordan Travis would offer up tonight. His young quarterback is to us three years of eligibility. Little did he know it would be Mackenzie Milton who could be the showstopper. 
Third down and four. Watch the pressure from Notre Dame. They bring heat. Milton loses the ball and then has to fall on it. But he does so well past the 30-yard line. J.D. Bertrand came surging in to make a big play for the Irish. And they just brought the heat this time as you see two Notre Dame defenders that are blitzing from the second level as Bertrand is able to get home unblocked, forcing Mackenzie Milton to a very uncomfortable situation. And Mackenzie, unfortunately, making this field goal much more difficult with the lost yardage play. Now a 50-yarder for Fitzgerald because of that play. 50-yard attempt, Ryan Fitzgerald. And wave that off. Let's bring in John Perry here. Timeout. Florida State. Florida State is challenging the ruling on the field of a fumble. John, they're challenging the ruling on the field previously of a fumble on that third down. Yeah, the hand's going forward. Is the ball in control as the hand goes forward to potentially create an incomplete pass would, which, which would then impact where the ball's kicked from. Oh, it shave off a good amount of distance. Right. All right, well, let's, let you be the judge here, John. And the ruling was a fumble. Overtime, the, the tight ones go to you, Joe. I don't think he <laughs> takes this ball. I, I like it as an incomplete pass. Do you well, really? The hand, I do. The hand is going forward with control. And he doesn't tuck it enough to consider it as a fumble. The ball does not get back to the body. Yeah, you see it in his hand as it's moving forward, and it just has to go forward just a little bit. See right there, right moving there. forward, still very much in Mackenzie Milton's hand. So I'm with you, John. I think this is an incomplete pass. Right, and the, and the key here, make it an incomplete pass, come back to the previous spot, which now makes that field goal much shorter. Good challenge. Line of scrimmage was just inside the 20. So a significant difference. Difference of 12 yards. Rolling on the field as it was a fumble that backed it up to the 32-yard line, causing it to be a 50-yard field goal attempt pending. Mike Norvell says, hold on a second, we think that's an incomplete pass. Making about a 38-yard field goal attempt. Fitzgerald, of course, hit the 43-yarder to get us to this place. And they are walking it back. After further review, the quarterback actually threw a pass, so the pass is incomplete. So the ball will be placed at the 31-yard line on the left pass, fourth down. That, John, I don't, I don't believe that's the right spot and mark of that ball at all. I want to take you back to the previous play. That ball is inside, cresting over the 20-yard line. Right. So with an right. incomplete pass, of course, it should go back to the original spot. As ACC officials led by Jeff Flanagan are going to need to clean this up. And now they do. You got to make that the 19 and a half yard line. There you go. Had such a good night. Let's get that right. So it's about a 37 yard attempt. Murray snapping, Mastromano holding, and Fitzgerald 
see if he can give Florida State a lead here in the first overtime. 37 yard attempt. Is no good. And the door is wide open for the Irish. Pretty wild sequence there. Because in an effort to make the field goal easier, you kind of ice your kicker at the same time. And as a result, that ball drifts just the littlest bit left. Struck well, end over end. Just a little bit off target. A disappointment there for the Florida State sideline. Brian Kelly. He's trying to close in on history. He's three wins away from tying the record of Newt Rockney. That's the school's all-time winningest coach. This has been quite the push the boulder up the hill night to get to win 103 if, if his grad student transfer quarterback Jack Cohn and this offense can deliver here. Cohn has passed for 367 yards. That is now the all-time season opener passing record in Irish history. What a debut. And we'll keep it on the ground as Williams chugs ahead. Star running back went for 1,125 yards as a second-team All-America a year ago. Trying to cap things here and put the Irish in position to close out what has been a wild one. Absolutely wild. Your approach as an offense here is, yes, you're already in field goal range. Don't take any unnecessary risks. But I don't want to leave it up to the kicker. I want to finish in the end zone with my offense. Second and seven. Play action. Here's Mayer, the big tight end. He's chopped down. That was Jamie Robinson. It was a 13-game starter for South Carolina. Made the commitment to come down here with some other SEC brethren to play ACC ball in this improved Knowles defense. Loss of a yard there. It's third and eight. I might throw a fade right here. If I'm Tommy Reese, so far tonight, his quarterback's throwing the ball beautifully down the field. You got press alignment, no deep help over the top. You could throw a fade and win the game right now. Third and eight. Williams goes nowhere. May have lost a half a yard. And now here comes the field goal unit for Notre Dame to win it. Jay Bramlett will be holding. Michael Milk Vincent will be snapping. And Jonathan Dorr for the win from 41 yards out. Can number nine Notre Dame survive? We're going to get our answer here with Dorr after this timeout by the Knowles. Florida State had those epic three drives. Went for 37 plays and 209 yards and 22 points to get back into this thing. Notre Dame had a couple of punts and then the desperation interception to close out regulation. But moments ago, the miss by Ryan Fitzgerald. And now Jack Cohn on a record-setting night trots off the field to put it into the hands of Jonathan Dora from Mecklenburg High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. On a night that has seen everything, including the unexpected of that young man. Does Dora have the look of the Irish? Great way to start the season. And isn't this game oh so good? The Irish win it in a thriller in Tallahassee.
How much do you love ball? Amazing. How much do you love ball? It's the best. It is the best. Every single week, it's the best. I love college football. Jack Cohn's a record setter. Florida State's a different kind of team. It's going to be fun watching them. 18 fourth quarter points to get it to overtime, but in the end, the Irish play to their talent level and win it. Here's Katie with Coach. Thanks, Tess. Brian, this game had it all. Yeah. What did you think of your team's ability to withstand Florida State's impressive comeback? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of uh, execution. Maybe, maybe our entire team needs to be executed after tonight. I mean, it, we just didn't execute very well. And I will say this, Florida State played extremely well. The two quarterback system they have, they create all kinds of problems. We've got some work to do. Um, I like our team. I like our players. Uh, I love their commitment and the way they fought. And uh, we're gritty. Uh, but we got a lot of work to do. Um, it's nice to go back and... and uh, do the work after a win. It, it was hard. Um, it's a tough environment to play. Mike's done a great job of getting this team playing back. They're skilled. They're fast. They're athletic. And uh, like I said, the two quarterback system they have gave us fits. But we hung in there and uh, we made the play that we needed to in overtime. You dipped into the transfer portal to bring Jack Cohn to South Bend. What did you think of his, of his first game? Yeah, I thought he did a nice job. There's a lot of learning there. Um, and I, I think, you know, to put 41 on, you know, in his first performance, that's pretty good. We got to clean up some things on offense, certainly. Um, you know, we lost some guys tonight uh, that, that challenged our depth. Um, but clearly, you know, the big plays have to be eliminated on defense. And we've got to execute a little bit better on third down. You know, we had too many third down situations, and we got that lull there in the fourth quarter. There's a, look, it's the first game. We're happy we got the victory, but if we want to be a playoff team and compete for a championship, we've got to get a lot better, and we got to get a lot better soon. I appreciate your time. Congratulations. Thanks. Tess. Well, for those who know their football history and trivia, way back in the 70s when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wore those creamsicle uniforms, John McKay, who had some of the great quotes, was the head coach of those dismal Buccaneers. And he was once asked what he thought of his team's execution. And he said, I'm in favor of it. BK, great historian of the game. But let me tell you something. His team is good, real good. They just had a feisty fighter opposite them tonight. But in the end, Jack Cohn and the Irish are on top. Katie, the guy with 366 yards and four touchdowns. That Jack Cohn. Yeah, that Jack Cohn. Take me through what's going through your mind when Dor kicks it through the uprights. Man, just an unbelievable kick. You know, unbelievable night here. Um, you know, winning on the road is always tough, and it's just so special to come out with a victory. This is your first game in this new uniform. What was this experience like for you? It quickly became a thriller. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's it doesn't even feel real to be out here wearing this jersey with this group of guys around me. And, you know, to get a win like this, I mean, it's just a dream come true. You know, you dream of playing in places like this. You know, this is just an iconic place, and to get a win like that is, is truly amazing. Coach Kelly said there's certainly a lot of things to work on on both sides. You put your team in a position to win. What did you think of your defense's ability to resettle in and get that stop when it was needed most? Yeah, they did an unbelievable job. You know, it's all about coming through in the big moments. And, you know, when the game was on the line, they came through and got a stop for us. And, you know, we owe it to them. Congratulations. Thank you Enjoy. so much. Thank you. Tess. That was one of the question marks, right? What would this team look like replacing Ian Book? What do you think of this Notre Dame team after seeing them tonight? I was impressed with how they weathered the storm, man. I mean, it was getting to the point, especially there in the fourth quarter, where it felt like it was slipping away. They got too conservative, especially with their defensive plan. I think they got too conservative offensively, lost a lot of rhythm. They allowed Florida State to get back in the game. So they can look at themselves and say, man, we got to change a lot from this week to next. But the fact that they didn't have their best stuff and still got a win on the road in a tough environment, it's big time. Overtime field goal by Dorr wins it for the Irish. For Katie George and Greg McElroy, I'm Joe Tessitore asking you to have yourself a great night on what was a special night in Tallahassee. What a thriller. 41-38, the Irish come out of a tough-earned win.
We've already foreseen two.